We're in the nation's capital for tonight's YouTube Game of the Week, the spot where the Nationals and Blue Jays are getting ready to play a one of a two game set at Nationals Ballpark. Now, Toronto is just sitting four games out of the second wild card spot in the American League, where Vlad Jr. is making his case for the MVP. And the Nationals, well, they're looking to play spoiler with one of the brightest young stars in the game, and Juan Soto, who, believe it or not, his home run derby performance actually improved his swing. I'm not sure how that happened, but it was a lot of fun to watch out in Denver. What's going on, my friends? And welcome to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Spotify. I'm your girl, Lauren Gardner, a.k.a. LG Red. And my co-host for today's show is a five-time All-Star who spent four seasons playing north of the border for the Blue Jays. He was a World Series champion with the 95 Braves, and he smashed 493 homers over his amazing 19-year career. Of course, I'm talking about the man, the myth, the legend, the crime dog, Fred McGriff. I felt like I was a game show host there, Fred. How are you? Hey, Thanks for LG, joining us today. LG Dude, did I make it awkward earlier? I did the fist pump. You went in for the high five. We actually got it right there. It's an honor to have you here. Oh, How is everything? It's awesome. Yeah. Dang. So we have quite the matchup here. We just need to break it down. It's your former team. You're an absolute legend with the Blue Jays. Should we unbox the matchup? Without a doubt. Let's do it. All right. Let's unbox the matchup here. Jays, Nats, first of this two-game series. Fred, we're going to start with the Jays here in the race. Just four games back there of that second wild card spot. Uh, what are your thoughts here, and do you think they can make a push in a very tough division? It's very tough. They've had, they're having a good year. I mean, nine games over 500 is pretty impressive. The only thing, the Red Sox and the Rays have yeah. had great seasons. You know, so it's going to be tough. They got their work cut out, but they still have a chance for the wild card. It's, it's up to their pitching. You know, you got Alex Manoa tonight, but those guys got to be shut down and give this team a chance to win because offensively, these guys, the Blue Jays can swing the bat. Yes, they can. So if their pitching just holds up, they have a chance. You know, because the Red Sox have been so-so in the second half. But I'm a little worried about the Yankees because the trade the Yankees made to pick up Rizzo and Gallo, I mean, it's changed the whole dynamic of that team. I'm a big fan of having a big lefty power hitter in your lineup. And for most of the year, the Yankees, they kind of struggled. They had, you know, you got Stanton and Judge from the right side. They really didn't have that big power left-handed bat. And now you add Rizzo and Gallo. <laughs> and so... The Jays got their work cut out. Yeah, we talked about what the Los Angeles Dodgers were able to do at the deadline. You talked about how the rich just keep getting richer, but that also happened in the East Coast there with the New York Yankees. Those two power lefties, Anthony Rizzo, made his presence known right away. His first couple of games endeared himself to all those fans, and that's a tough crowd to please. So you're absolutely right. Everyone be on watch for the New York Yankees. But, of course, you know, Toronto has that nice young core. They were representing at the All-Star Game in Denver, Colorado, of Crime Dog, and it was a lot of fun to watch, especially when you see what Vlad Jr. was able to do, named the youngest all-star MVP in the history of baseball. But you also have some great young names in that lineup. Oh, also with Biggio yeah. and Bichette and those guys. And I love watching them play because those kids, they're aggressive. They go up there swinging the bat. And Bichette, I watched him over years when he was young and everything, and he's come such a long ways. Biggio, a good player, following his dad's footsteps and so forth. And then Vlad. Vlad has been awesome, and I love it. Last year at this time, they're con the Blue Jays are concerned about his weight. They had him dh -ing most of the time. But this offseason, he went and he lost some weight, and all of a sudden, he's a st young stud. 314 average, 35 home runs. Impressive. I love that he got, his, he got himself in shape, got his body ready, and now he's been playing first base every night for him. Yeah, he looks really solid there for them. 40 pounds in total. I know he worked really hard in the offseason. Just saying. That's all you need to do. You need to be more <laughs> mobile and really living up to his potential because he was part of that draft class or he came up with Fernando Tatis Jr., who was a star in the making from jump. So I think he probably felt some of that pressure as well. So it was really interesting. On the bump tonight for the Blue Jays, it's Alec Manoa, arguably one of the best rookie pitchers in the game. Without a doubt. He comes right at the hitters. I've been watching him, and he's not scared. I mean, he's coming right at him with fastballs. He's throwing strikes. I mean, he, he's on a mission for a young kid. I mean, you got to love him. 
Yeah, it's definitely that confidence that you look for. And it seems like this team, and you can attest to this, Crime Dog, has that confidence. They're out there. They're having a good time. And, you know, you see all these teams having uh, those home run celebrations. They now have the jacket. It, it seems like that energy could help propel them to that next level. Without a doubt. This is, you know, they got six weeks left in the season. You know, go hard. Go as hard as you can. But it's helping all these kids get experience. So next yeah. year, you know, in the offseason, if they go out and make a few more, you know, moves with their pitching staff, they're going to be very exactly tough. Exactly what they need. Yeah, in a very tough division. And on the flip side, the Nats are in a very tough division themselves. We didn't know people were kind of expecting that they might have a bounce back year after they won in 2019, down here in the abbreviated COVID season. But the Nats just sold off a lot of players, seven all-stars at the deadline over the course of two days to be exact. But... They have a chance to play spoiler down the stretch. It's a beautiful thing because it's like you start facing. I've been in this situation <laughs> and, and, and you set goals going into the year. So this last six weeks, you still got your goals, right? Yeah, but you want these other teams to go home. You want them golfing and fishing with you. So, <laughs> so the Mets and Reds and Braves and so forth. They got to be heads up because the Nats are on a mission. And also you got the young kids, you know, the uh, Carter Kabooms, mm -hmm. the Robles. It's time for these kids to step up and show the Nats that they can play. But it's all about like, hey, I want you on the golf course with me and fishing. So I love I'm that. I'm gonna beat up on you. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% a good way to look at it too. But you just want some company out there, and those oh, are great goodness. activities to be engaged in. You talked about Carter Keboom. You talked about uh, Victor Robles. Let's talk about Juan Soto for a second. 22 years old, an absolute star in this league, and it seems like. Uh, this is his team at this point. Oh, I love him. I mean, the kid, he's, he's outstanding. I mean, he knows how to play the game, you know, growing up in Dominican Republic, so he's been around baseball this life. But he has huge power. I mean, I, I watch him all the time, and his oppo power is unbelievable. I mean, every time you look around, he's going oppo. When I would try to hit a ball the opposite field, I had to really hit it. I probably would hit five or six home runs to the opposite field. <laughs> But wow. Soto, every time you look around, he's going opposite field. His last, uh, the last since 2018, I mean, he's been killing it opposite field. <laughs> look at that. You know, and Ronald Acuna hits a lot of home runs opposite field his own self. But Soto has been, the man is pretty impressive because for you to hit a ball to opposite field, it's outstanding. And then I still watch it and his eye. He takes some off the coast close pitches. I wonder, like, if he's is he's tipping the umpires or something like that. <laughs> look, look at these pitches that he's getting, and the umpires are calling them balls. I mean, they're close to being strikes, but he's real close. You know what I'm saying? And so, his chase rate at the end of the day is unbelievable. As you see, 13.3 is the lowest in all of baseball. Yeah. So impressive. if he doesn't swing, it's a ball. And it's just great how, you know, he, he uses a spread stance, and so that helps him just see the ball very well. He's not doing a lot of much. He, he's just pretty simple. Just more he, he picks his foot up and puts it down, and then, bam, he's swinging, and he has such a great eye. It's unbelievable at age of 22 to be that good. The age of 22 to have that much discipline at the plate. I mean, I don't know what you were doing at 22. I'm still eating Skittles for breakfast. <laughs> no, hey, I was still swinging at balls in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he's able to do it. And yet, yeah, his, uh, you see what he's doing. Highest OPS through the age 22 season. Uh, pretty good company to be in there, as you see uh, Ted Williams there at the top. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, now it's time to get to our poll question of the day. And this is a hard hitting one here, but it's basically who is going to win tonight's game? Blue Jays, Nats, hit us up here tonight's pitching matchup. Alec Manoa there with a 259 ERA and 59 innings pitch, as we told you. And Eric Fetty with a 5.12 ERA and 91 in a third innings pitch. We're going to step aside when we come back. Robbie Ray is going to join us. And we'll have more here on the YouTube Game of the Week pregame show. Fred okay, McGriff, great. Lauren Gardner here with you. Eric Fetty getting ready for his start. Nice. Nice camera. The pitch. Hit hard on the left side. Diving stop. Made by Espinal. Pops up. Goes to first. Dig by Vladdy to get the out. Good work on both ends of that problem. Sharp one hopper to short. Bichette 
What a play and a stretch by Guerrero at the other end. But what a play by Bo Bichette to retire Jack Mayfield. Springer lifts one to left field. This ball is well struck and it's gone as well. Number 15 on the season for Springer and it is two to nothing Blue Jays. Springer turns on another one and this will be his second home run of the night. Great throws. And the pitch is slugged in the air straight away center field. Springer back through the track at the wall he leaps and he makes the catch. George Springer with a leaping grab at the wall and straight away center field. He robs Torrens of extra bases. Leading 3-2, looking for more. He lifts one to left field, deep, and a grand slam for Teoscar Hernandez. The first of his major league career, and the Blue Jays now lead 7-2. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Spotify, the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan experience. Watch all new episodes for free only on Spotify. Well, as we take a look at the 2021 ERA leaders here in the AL, Robbie Ray sandwiched between two all-stars. Pretty good ERA if you're into that thing with a 2.88 as we welcome in the lefty starter from the nation's capital. Robbie, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see that list there, but you know that you're in the conversation for the Cy Young this season. Uh, when you hear that, how does that make you feel in your eighth season in the bigs? Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like uh, hard work starting to pay off. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good names on that list. Uh, you know, Lance Lynn's having a great year. Garrett Cole is doing what he's always done. So uh, just to be in the conversation with those guys is is very humbling for sure. Now, Robbie, I know it's tough. You can't give away all your secrets, but what has it been changing leagues going from the National League to American League? What kind of adjustments have you had to make? Yeah, you're no longer facing the pitcher in the nine hole. So uh, instead of facing, uh, you know, Patrick Corbin, you're facing J.D. Martinez. Uh, so it's a little more uh, a little more strategy involved in 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 that aspect. But, you know, it's great. I, I love the competition. I love competing every day and, I, you know, wouldn't want to be anywhere else but the AL East. Yeah, a bit of an adjustment there, but you seem like you're up for the task. Uh, let's talk about the adjustment this season. You've played in three different home parks. You're now back in Toronto. What has this roller coaster been like for your club? Yeah, it's been uh, it's, it's it's been weird. Uh, it's definitely been a weird season. Uh, starting the year in Dunedin, uh, then moving to Buffalo. I mean, two of arguably the biggest hitters parks, uh, or best hitters parks in in baseball, and then going to Toronto. Uh, you know, it's been great. But, uh, we have you know great fans there. Uh, they've been showing out for us. Um, you know, we had a great homecoming, uh, great series at home. So we're looking forward to you know staying there and being in Toronto. Now, Robbie, I know it's a beautiful thing. You, go, you went from the Diamondbacks offensively were just okay to now you got the studs, the young kids, Guerrero, Bichette, Biggio. <laughs> How is that pitching behind those guys? Uh, it's great. You know, you know every night they're going to come out and they're going to they're going to put up some big numbers. So uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch Vladdy and uh, this year uh, doing what he's doing, making a case for MVP. Uh, and, you know, Bo is doing Bo. Uh, that's and you know we have Marcus Simeon as well who has been quiet uh, quietly been putting together a, a MVP season as well so uh, and then you know we get George Springer back there uh, for a little bit and you know what he does to a lineup is is uh, special as well so it's been really fun to watch. Yeah, it's a fun young group. I was able to spend a little bit of time with them in Denver for All-Star Week. And, uh, yeah, I love the home run jacket. Love all of it. I did some digging on your social media. It took me a minute. Nashville guy, you're big into country music. You met your wife, Taylor, who's also a singer. So tell me a little bit about that story and uh, what bands are you into? <laughs> uh, you know, I pretty much listen to anything country music. But, yeah, I, you know, we met in Nashville through a mutual friend, uh, you know, Loved her from the day I met her, and uh, you know she's uh, she's been awesome. She's been solid. You know we have three kids at home uh, during this you know transition period, going to, you know like we said three different stadiums. She's always been uh, the one that's you know always been there with the kids, and 
uh, she's been she's been solid this year as well. So it's I uh, just want to thank her for sure. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, Robbie, I'm curious in this day and age with all the numbers and analytics. I know as a hitter myself, I always was watch looking to see pitchers strikes per innings, um, walks, little stuff like that. So nowadays they feed you a lot of numbers every week before you start. What numbers that you really key on against opposing uh, batters? Uh, you know, for me, it's uh, I try to pitch with my strengths. I try to, you know, no matter what the lineup is, I try to uh, always, always pitch to my strengths. And I felt like that's something that I've been able to do a lot better this year is not necessarily pitching away from uh, what the hitter strengths are, but but pitching more to my strengths. And I feel like that that has helped me be successful this year. Yeah, it's uh, definitely paying off as we take a look at your team and what they've been able to do this season, making your way up the standings. Make your case for the Toronto Blue Jays to make it into the postseason. I mean, we're a young team. We're, we're our pitching and hitting is coming around. Uh, we're starting to click on all cylinders. Uh, we're pitching and hitting at the same time, whereas earlier in the year, you know, we were struggling to find that. I feel like we're, everything's starting to come together, and uh, I feel like we got a pretty favorable schedule coming down the stretch for us. Round of applause there. I feel like that's a solid case. Robbie, thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck down the stretch. Thank you. Time now for our creator spotlight. Today we're spotlighting Enoch Westover from Quash Tag Gaming. Now his favorite team, San Francisco Giants, and he loves to play some MLB The Show on his channel. Favorite moment? Well, how about Travis Ishikawa's walk-off bomb to win game five of the 2014 NLCS against the Cards? Enoch, what's up, my friend? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's circle back, though, to the Giants fandom here because we were talking about this before we got started. Are you surprised that this team has the best record in baseball? And do you think they have the staying power to win the division? Oh, I mean, I'm shocked. I think a lot of people share that thought with me. As for whether or not they have the staying power to be in first place when it all is said and done, I mean, I think the Giants could be asking themselves the same question that every contender is asking themselves, and that is, does our pitching have enough gas in the tank to get us through down the stretch and through the postseason? But I think the Giants got a shot. They got a lot of guys that are out there to prove themselves in the form of Alex Wood, Kevin Gossman, and Anthony Descalafani. Yeah, I think that's the best point, especially on the heels of that abbreviated pandemic season. It's going to be whose rotation, whose bullpen can last the longest. Uh, so we know that the Giants' closest competitor to the division title are the L.A. Dodgers. And, of course, the rich just keep getting richer there at the deadline. So what was your reaction when they got Trey Turner and Max Serzer? I mean, it was just ridiculous. I mean, in the moment, you're just thinking to yourself, how is that even fair? But at the same time, you got to acknowledge the fact that the, that the Dodgers put themselves in this position themselves by competing at a high level in the major leagues while also developing that talent down the farm to get them the pieces like Max Scherzer and Trey Turner for that push down the stretch. So, I mean, as a Giants fan, it's easy to, easy to be mad, but you can't help but respect the Dodgers and the work that they've done. Yeah, it's definitely hard to knock success. That also help, helps when you have the payroll there. Uh, so your team does play the Mets tonight, so we might as well get your That's thoughts right. on the NL East. Uh, who do you think is going to come out on top? Now, the NL East is kind of wacky when you break it down. I mean, <laughs> you got the Phillies that can find a way to put runs up on the board, but their pitching is kind of iffy at spots, and that's the same case for the Braves. You can't really hang your hat on the Braves pitching staff, but you can be sure that they're gonna find a way to put runs up on the board. Now the Mets though, the interesting thing is on paper, they look like they can fire on all cylinders on both the offensive and defensive side, but the offenses have not been clicking. It looks like they're just going into the game every time out, just swinging without a plan, just hoping for something to fall their way. And really, like I said, when we look at them on paper, all they gotta do is find a way to make it click. And I think the Mets are the favorite only a game and a half out. So you're saying there's a chance we're here in the Northeast and I have a lot of friends who are Mets fans and let me tell you it's not good for your heart. It is really tough being no. a Mets fan this season or you know the past 30 years. Uh, so who do you think is going to be the favorite to win the NL MVP? You know I think it's going to come down to whether or not Jacob DeGrom is going to come back for that final month here in September. I think if he does come back he's going to lead the charge the pitching staff altogether is going to settle down. Everything's going to start clicking on the offensive side but if he doesn't come back it's really a toss-up between the Phillies and the Braves, I think. 
Yeah, I think that's uh, definitely a good choice there. Enoch, we really appreciate your time and uh, we'll be sure to check out your channel. Great, thanks for having me. More to come here on the YouTube Game of the Week pregame show as Vlad Jr. gets ready for the first of a two-game set between the Jays and the Nats. Coming up next, lineups, news from Toronto. Spoiler alert, not good news and picks to click. We'll be back with more after this. So now Victor Robles, and Robles swings and hits one in the air to deep left field. Moving Dominic Smith back has a play out of the warning track. And missed the ball up against the wall. So rounding third is Riley Adams coming to the plate, and the throw will not be in time. Soto, center field. That ball's on the ground. Skipping deep into the gap. Robles home, Escobar to third. Soto delivers RBI number 62, and the Nats are on top. Well hit. Sliding to his right, Garcia, quick exchange with the hands. Nice play. He's the master of the slide on one knee play, I think. Nice play. That ball hit hard up the middle. Oh, Escobar, nice grab. Shovels to Garcia. Oh, how about that for a 6-4-3. Wow. That's one of the best double plays of the year. And the table is set in the first inning. And that ball driven out to left center. See you later. One solo, a line drive. The ballpark couldn't hold it. He's up to 61 RBIs and his 19th puts the Nats on top. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Spotify, the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan Experience. Watch all new episodes for free only on Spotify. Lauren Gardner, Fred McGriff here with you as we break down the Washington Nationals starting lineup. Victor Robles there in that one spot. Juan Soto, three spot. And of course, Josh Bell in at number four hitting cleanup. Crime Dog, what are your thoughts on what Josh Bell's been able to do for this team? Uh, he's been hanging tough. He got off to a slow start, but the last month or so, he's starting to swing the bat better. He was a huge you know, addition in the offseason. I was like, man, they got Josh Bell and Kyle Swarbert. This is going to be a great offensive club. And early on, he struggled, but lately he's been coming, he's been doing a good job. Yeah, Sin Carter Keyboom hitting 294 here in the month of August as we take a look here at the Blue Jays starting lineup. And of course, Crime Dog, we've been talking all about these young guys. But of course, Marcus Simeon coming over from the A's in free agency has been a huge piece of this puzzle and has also been a leader in that clubhouse. Oh, he's been another great pickup, and he moved to second base. And that's not easy, playing shortstop with the Oakland A's, and now he's playing second. That had to be a big adjustment, having a huge year. Yeah, that's a really good point. I've never even thought about, you know, making that transition and going from short to third, much easier. But, yeah, when you put it on the flip side, that's much more difficult. Okay, so as you can see that the Blue Jays lineup was without George Springer, who was placed on the IL this afternoon, retroactive to Monday. Now the Jays center fielder left the game on Saturday night against the Mariners in what was originally called an ankle sprain, but further evaluation showed that it was indeed his knee. There was no timetable on his return. So the man the Jays gave $150 million to this offseason has only played in 49 games for Toronto, but has been impactful in those games with 16 homers and 35 RBI and an OPS of 972. So Fred, the Blue Jays have dealt with the loss with Springer already earlier this season. So with every game so important down the stretch, do you think they're going to be able to do it without him again? Well, they have no choice. They're kind of used to it now. Yeah. But <laughs> he's missed a whole lot of games. It's been crazy. Starting the year off with his quad and so forth, and then now his ankle. He plays hard, but sometimes, you know, he's just going to have to just play smart because we need you on the field. Because when he plays on the field, he, he already has 16 home runs on a year. <laughs> and he's barely playing. So next year, we got to keep him on the field. That was the good veteran crime dog pep talk like okay man we love you we love you going you're balling out but we need to just dial it back a little bit exactly I want to see guys play 150 games I'd rather have you healthy for 150 games than you know yeah. trying to steal bases breaking your finger this and that you're caught 
I get and that. And you're sitting on the sidelines. You know what I mean? Come and on, I want to see your picks to click as we move over to that portion of the show. I can't believe this pregame show is flying by so quickly. So we're going to get started here. Vlad Jr., the AL MVP, uh, if he wins the Triple Crown, Crime Dog, is he the favorite? Can he beat out Shohei Otani? No doubt, LG. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Triple Crown is so tough. Yeah. I mean, the last guy to do was Miguel Cabrera. So if he wins that Triple Crown, it's his. Man, I'm just telling you. I like that. I think that's like very straightforward, straight into the point. I mean, it's tough to beat out Shohei Otani, the modern day Babe Ruth. But Vlad Jr., do not sleep on him just because he's north of the border. Okay, we're going to move on to our next one. Robbie Ray, as we take a look at Vlad, just hitting absolute bombs here, but we're going to move on to a little bit of pitching here. Robbie Ray, does he have a shot at the Cy Young Award? We already talked to him earlier. Well, he has a shot, but he's going to have to turn it on these last six weeks. He's going to really uh, continue to pitch well and give the Blue Jays the chance. Now, if the Blue Jays end up being right in that playoff hunt, wild card hunt, he has a chance. I like that. He does have a chance. And you look at the company that he's in right now. I mean, you just saw what Lance Lynn was able to do in that series with the White Sox. He looked very strong in the Field of Dreams game. Garrett Cole now back off the IL, uh, looking very strong as well. A plus 260 to win. But then there's Robbie Ray there in the mix. And like you said, if they can make a run, if they can make a push, he'll probably be a big piece of that puzzle. Yeah, and see the White Sox, you know, Lance Lynn and Rendon, they've been having great years, and the team is in first place, and it's Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. We're the favorites. We're so. Chicago. I mean, that's a special team. I was just around them for a couple of days. And you want to talk about chemistry, very similar to what the Toronto Blue Jays have, in my opinion. Now, the Nationals, they are out of it, as we know, so much so um, that they're off the board on the FanDuel Sportsbook. So between the Braves, and your, which is your former team, and the New York Mets, who's your favorite to win the NL East? The Braves, they're getting healthy right now. And I Period. know the Phillies have the easier schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but the Braves are really swinging the bat. I mean, the trades the GM made um, during this at uh, All-Star break has been tremendous. Uh, I mean, with Adam Duvall and so forth, he's been carrying these guys. Yes. Freddie Freeman has gotten hot. Albie, Swanson, Riley. Oh, yeah, they're swinging it the back good. It's just if that bullpen just hangs in there, they're going to win it. I think that's the biggest question. We've already talked about it so far in the show. It's just who can stay healthy, healthiest the longest coming off of that 60-game season last year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in that very tough division. So let's get back to tonight's game. Over-under is set at 9. Mm -hmm. So we have Eric Fetty. We have Alec Manoa. We have a stacked lineup in Toronto. Can we get to over 9 runs? I'm going under. Under? Yeah, okay. Alex has been throwing the ball good, so I don't see the Nationals scoring too many runs tonight, and I don't know if the Blue Jays can pop up seven or eight runs, so I'm going under. I, I think that's probably a solid pick as you see the numbers there. Over is a minus 120, and the under is minus 102. So it will be interesting as the Nats look to play spoilers and the Blue Jays are fighting for their playoff lives. Now let's get you to the poll results. For tonight's game, Toronto Blue Jays now 85% picked to win this one. Are we surprised by that? I mean, we had some Nats fans weighing in at 15%, but come on, Crime Dog. Let's be honest. I think you and I know who the favorites are. Oh, without a doubt. You know, it should be a good game, though, because like I said, the Nationals, they want to be spoilers, so they're going to they're gonna play hard, but I just think they just don't have the talent right now to compete with the upper echelon team. So I just see Guerrero and the boys just doing what they got to do and just continue to uh, – Swing the bat, and this is a great opportunity to pat your stats. And Guerrero and the boys, I like that nickname there as we take another look here at the wild card standings because things are getting real in the American League, especially the AL East where the Blue Jays are just fighting once again for their playoff lives. Uh, you can see them just four games back of that second spot, but what is going on with the Yankees and the Red Sox right now is they're in a series of their own. But see, it's going to be great because the Red Sox and Yankees got another game tonight, so one of them is going to lose tonight. Yep. Okay, so... The Blue Jays are four games back now, so if they can win this game tonight, they're going to pick up a game on either the Red Sox or the Yankees. Yeah, and of course the Nats looking to play spoiler as they have a lot of games upcoming against contenders, and I, I know that's always a fun feeling, but uh, it was also a fun feeling just to do this pregame show with you, Crime Dog. Thank you. What was your favorite part? 
LG. Do, LG, of course. You know, <laughs> LG Red, the communist appliance. Working here with the crime dog, Fred McGriff, as Juan Soto gets ready for a big night in the nation's capital. Once again, looking to take down the Blue Jays in the first of a two game series. We're just 15 seconds away from first pitch as we'll get you out for our YouTube Game of the Week presented by Spotify for a great crew here at MLB Network. For Fred McGriff, I'm Lauren Gardner. We'll see you on the flip. Baseball in D.C., a city that fell in love with their 2019 title team, and now they're going to watch new pieces form and emerge after a trade deadline bonanza, and the visiting ball club is thinking big, and they have the bats to back up the dreams. This is the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube, presented by Spotify. A two-game interleague tilt starts up tonight with the Toronto Blue Jays and the Washington Nationals at Nats Park. Here at Nats Park with a former Jay. You had some good days with Toronto. A lot of good times with the Toronto Blue Jays. Consecutive Cy Youngs for Roger Clemens, mm -hmm. 1997, 1998. And there are good times right now with 2020, 2021. This is a really good young Toronto Blue Jays team. That's right. With some very recognizable last names like Bichette and Guerrero. And just like father, sons can swing the bat. Yeah, you know what? These two guys have been on the Blue Jays radar for about the last four or five years. There's been a lot of hype about both players. Bo Bichette at shortstop. Vlad started out at third base, now at first base. Hard to believe, but they've lived up to, and Vlad, they may have even exceeded expectations up to this point. They might have themselves a future MVP, and you know what? They are kings of the north right now. Do you love the music as well? Love the music. I'm just <laughs> glad that I'm up here not trying to get either one of these two guys out. <laughs> they are tough to dethrone, if you know what I'm saying. Bichette, Lord among Al shortstops and hits, runs, and RBIs. And I like that one on the right side. Vladdy rules MLB in runs, OPS, and total bases. We'll see them both tonight. And then on the home side, the Nationals definitely did some serious selling at the deadline. They still have their rock. Their king is Juan Soto, who said, you know what? I think I need the home run derby to fix my swing. Did it work? It did. A lot of great young players in Major League Baseball, but this guy you're looking at right here, in my opinion, he's the best left-handed hitter in either league. Watch them take batting practice this afternoon, and I marveled. He did not hit one ball from center to right. Everything to left field. He doesn't get a lot of pitches to hit, but when he gets them, he doesn't miss them. He puts on a clinic. He is wise beyond his years. And now at this point, you're looking at the damage that he's done in the second half of the season. You're wondering, why even pitch to this guy? Unbelievable strike zone recognition. He very rarely swings at balls that are out of the strike zone. He swings at strikes. That's why he hits for average and he hits for power. He leads the league in walks. He leads the league in on base percentage as well. He's got the smile, the swag the confidence and hey the first half was okay but the second half is dynamite he has really found it how about that OPS of 1.219 that's not a misprint that is raking home run derby working out for Juan Soto we're gonna see him up against hotshot rookie Alec Manoa in the bottom of the opening frame but first it's the Blue Jays along with lineups and first pitch from Nats Park hello TJ ready as he lines it into left center a base hit and a big two run single for Guriel as he sends a fly ball to left field it is well hit and it's gone number 13 on the season for Guriel and how about this he hits it well enough to get it beyond Joe Adele and left and Guriel's at second base with his second extra base hit of the night and there's a base hit into right field. Dickerson around third. He'll come home to score as Eaton lobs the ball into second. Neil one. Another curve in the air towards left field. Charging in Goriel goes into a slide and he makes the catch. That ball died quickly on its way to left field. And Lourdes looks like he got it. And 
and he did. Guriel sends one just inside the foul pole down the left field line, number 14 on the season. It is six to three. Hill one. Kelnick hits it sharply down to first. Fair ball stepping on the back. Guriel steps to throw down to second. The tag on Toro, and he's out. An inning ending double play. Brilliantly done by Lourdes Guriel Jr. We are bringing it on YouTube with some unique features that bring you closer to the game wherever you're watching. We've been cruising through our exclusive game package on YouTube this season. Tell your friends it's easy to find us, youtube.com slash MLB. It's free for everyone. Join the 3 million plus subscribers on the MLB YouTube channel. Also, a brand new feature that we rolled out last week. We're really excited about it. You can personalize your listening ex experience on your favorite devices by selecting primary, home, or away in the audio track settings. Make sure you check that out. Also, YouTube TV customers like me, you're hooked up in the MLB pop-up channel guide. Let's do this. Eric Fetty matching up against Marcus Semien, and we are underway live on YouTube to a global audience. Scott Braun along with the three-time All-Star Dan Plesak and Dan Kolko will join us soon. Eric Fetty pumps a strike in there against Marcus Semien, and he's bringing it with his pace already. Well, this is a tough lineup. Marcus Simeon, Bo Bichette, Vlad Guerrero, Teoscar Hernandez. One, two, three, four. You're going to have to be right on the mark if you're Eric Fetty right out of the gate. All-star city when you're looking at this position player group. Simeon, 30 years old, bet on himself this offseason, took a one-year deal. He'll be back on the free agent market again. and. So far, so good. It's working out for him. You know, we had a chance to talk to Charlie Montoya before the game. Made a switch, was a shortstop for the longest time, and this year moved over to second base, and he told us before the game how much of an influence he's been on Bo Bouchette. Uh, he's made the transition to second base, as you touched on. Not bad. 27 bombs so far this year. Third place finisher in AL MVP voting in 2019. 33 homers and 92 RBIs, career highs in those categories. A little bit of a down 2020, although it's six games, a slow start, he had a lot going on. He is back and as good as ever right now. Spits that one foul down the right side. You know, the Blue Jays, they, they, there was so much hype coming into the season with Vlad Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bouchette. They bring in Marcus Simeon. Uh, there's a good look at Vlad Jr. who's had a monster year if not for Shohei Otani out west with the Angels he would be a shoe in right now for AL MVP. Semyon down the line foul ball. But I think one of the things the Blue Jays have going for him we talked to Charlie Montoya before the game their bullpen's thrown the ball better as of late it was kind of the Achilles heels of the Blue Jays the first couple of months of the season. There's a good look at Charlie Montoya. It's he was telling us how nice it is to be able to write that lineup card when you have guys like Vlad Jr. and Bo Bouchette, Marcus Simeon, the list goes on and on, Teoscar Hernandez. These guys like to play, particularly Simeon, he likes to play every day. Swing and a miss. Fetty gets him with the off speed stuff. You're right, don't you dare tell Marcus Simeon he is not playing a baseball game when the Jays are in action and he's there he just struck out then it'll be his buddy and double play partner Bo Bichette. Vladdy Jr. leads baseball and runs at OPS. Teoscar Hernandez is the reigning player of the week in the AL. Dickerson's in there. Grichik in center for Springer who was just placed on the injured list. Santiago Espinal at third. Reese McGuire is going to catch Alec Manoa who we're excited to watch on the other side. And here's Bichette taking a first pitch strike. The wide zone. A little bit of a wide zone and Eric Fetty's going to need all the help he can get. He's four and eight on the year. ERA a little bit north of five. Five pitch makes you go back to 2014. It was a first round draft pick out of UNLV 18th overall pick. Josh Bell lines it up in foul ground for out number two. Let's get your Spotify breakdown on Eric Fetty the 28 year old making his 20th start. Well he's a five pitch guy but he's mainly going to go to two pitches you're going to see for the most part. He's got a good fastball and secondary pitches need to come in play. 
good sign that strikeout of Marcus Simeon that slider way contained the top of this order which is so lethal Simeon Bichette and Guerrero and if at possible get some length the bullpen's used been used a lot if he can get into the sixth inning it'll make life a lot easier for Dave Martinez managing that bullpen. Here's the matchup Vladimir Guerrero Junior taking a pitch in and unlike father his plate discipline is off the charts. He is not going to bite at pitches out of the zone especially this year as you can see the OBP leads the American League. He gets on base. You're getting a chance tonight if you're watching this on YouTube you're getting a chance to look at two very special young players both of the Dominican Republic. Vlad Junior has cut his strike zone down. He swings at a lot of strikes and we're going to get a chance in the next inning to look at Juan Soto. Right left you're going to it's be hard pressed to find it. Two better young hitters in the game of baseball, both with strike zone recognition, with home run and batting average, they can get on base too. Vladdy Jr. was the youngest ever All Star Game MVP. He put on a show in Denver, Colorado this year. I think what gets lost in the mix too with that big bat that he's swinging, he touched on the 314 to 38, 35 home runs. Much improved defensively at first base too. Uh, very aggressive thrower. He's not afraid to try to go ahead and get a lead runner on a bunt or a ground ball to try to turn that 3-6-3 double play. All around terrific player and he continues to get better. Whiffs on the 3-1 and Fetty has a full boat on Vladdy who's playing his 300th career game tonight. That was a pretty good breaking ball there 3-1 by Fetty. Same pitch he struck Marcus Simeon to start the inning out. Good sign if you're Dave Martinez to have him some secondary pitches. Strikeouts are way up this year for Fetty. He's been more of a ground ball guy in his career. There is the ground ball through the vacated right side, and Vladdy Jr. is a two out base runner. Well, that's one of the reasons why he's hitting 314, 3 2 count, doesn't try to do much. That was actually a pretty good pitch from Fetty. Fastball, you can see that's located on the outer half of that shift. Nobody on that right side, and he takes what the Nationals are giving him. A terrific piece of hitting right here. Little cutter on the outside third. Doesn't try to pull it. Hits it right through that vacated hole at second base. He had a hit just like that on Sunday. Vladdy coming off a nice weekend against the Seattle Mariners. He had been a little cooler up to that point. Now it's Teoscar Hernandez. He's sizzling more than anyone in this lineup right now. He was named American League Player of the Week for the last seven days leading up to today. You know what's so difficult, Scott, as a pitcher, you go through this lineup and you concentrate on Simeon, Bichette, and Guerrero, and you start trying to say, okay, I'm going to take a little deep breath. But Teoscar Hernandez in four and five, part of this order, Corey Dickerson hit his first home run for the Jays this past weekend in Seattle. This is just a team that they just they're relentless. They just continue to hit and hit and hit. Odds courtesy of FanDuel. So five and a half. You're gushing over this offense. I'm guessing you're going over. Oh, I'm going way over. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things I think that has uh, caught people in baseball by surprise is with Marcus Simeon Bichette and particularly Vlad Guerrero. They're, they don't swing at very many bad pitches. Uh, listen, when, when you hit like they do and you. You hit home runs like the Blue Jays do. There's going to be some swing and miss that comes along with that. But as you saw that Vlad Guerrero 3 2 swing, they're just up there, not just hacking. Four pitch walk. Tay Oscar is on board. Looks like a buggy night, too. You could see him kind of wafting away the gnats in his face. Yeah, this is a tough lineup for Eric Fetty. We talked about it. he's a five pitch guy, fastball, sinker, slider, curveball, and a changeup. Uh, Dave Martinez would like to see him start to go a little bit deeper in the games. Gone over 100 pitches a couple of times. They kind of wanting to find out to see what they're going to have for 2022 and beyond. Steven Strasburg had surgery a couple of weeks ago. It looks like he's going to be out the majority of the 2022 season. The big trade at the deadline Max Scherzer and Trey Turner off to the Dodgers. A little bit of a different look. There's a good look at Dave Martinez. Go back to 2019. We talked to him before the game, Scott. And they win it all and that crazy COVID 2020 season. Expectations were high. And this team was actually playing good baseball going into the first week of June. And then the kind of the, the floor fell out from beneath them. And it was time to make some moves. And 
move some big name players. They were 40 and 38 on June 30th, two games out of first place. They've lost 30 of 40 since then. You look at two teams in the National League that a lot of people thought had a chance to contend the Cubs and the Nationals, both of them, right before the All Star break, their play was so bad that both general managers and organizations thought it was time to look towards the future and mega trades right at the deadline. They both had a nice run. I'll give them that. Both picked up World Series titles. We can see the Nationals defensive setup presented by Spotify, a gold glover over at shortstop, a throwback, Alcides Escobar. 2015 with KC, did a lot of great work with the Royals organization, and then he's been a bit of a journeyman and pops back up with the Nationals. We'll talk more about him in the bottom of the frame. And seven misses in a row for Fetty. Green light. Oh I would think so try to blow something open here certainly in the first inning. Randall Grichik on deck no day at the beach either if you're Fetty. Takes a fastball on the outside corner. Pretty good take though there's not much you can do with that 3 0 pitch. See one of the things that has been problematic for Fetty. Percentage of strikes lowest in the NL that's not a good list to be on and Dave Martinez would like to see him attack the strike zone a little bit more. Dickerson likes the 3 1. It's up the middle. A little step on the back to retire this side. So, two left stranded as Eric Fetty is able to wiggle his way through the top of the first. We'll intro the Nats lineup next. And the table is set in the first inning. And that ball driven out to left center. See you later. One solo, a line drive. The ballpark couldn't hold it. He's up to 61 RBIs and his 19th puts the Nats on top right out of the game. Next pitch over the top and a line drive up the middle base hit center field. Up the middle and he is two for two in the game plus a walk. Outfield around to the left. But he's going to pull it down the right field line. Oh, I mean, everything he hits is on the nose, right? Soto, center field. That ball's on the ground. Skipping deep into the gap. Robles home. Escobar to third. Soto delivers RBI number 62. Here's Juan Soto. Right field. Back is Soler. And he can only play the carom. Robles heads for third. Soto into second after missing tying the game by not too much. And you're wondering if it was going to get out of here. Take the double just for the top half of the scoreboard wall there. Let's roll out the Spotify Washington Nationals starting nine. It begins with Victor Robles, the veteran Alcides Escobar at shortstop, hitting second in front of Juan Soto, who leads baseball and on base percentage. Josh Bell, the switch hitter, is cleaning up. Yadiel Hernandez in the five spot, the 33 year old rookie. Carter Keyboom hits next. Luis Garcia at second, hitting seventh. Riley Adams will catch tonight for Eric Fetty. Big rookie Alec Manoa is on the mound and there's really not much of a debate over who the best rookie starting pitcher is in the American League. You're looking at him. Yeah big look at him. He's a big dude to look at too. Six 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 about 260 pounds and the Blue Jays love everything about this guy. He's in attack mode right from the get go. He kind of pitches with that closer mentality to start a game out kind of a no nonsense guy not afraid to pitch inside. 11th round pick by the Blue Jays in the 2019 draft out of University of West Virginia has a good fastball like that one right there Scott and what I like about it he's not afraid to attack the strike zone particularly with his fastball and establishes it early. 
He saws off bats. He's coming off a career high 11 strikeout performance on Wednesday and a win against Anaheim. And for our Spotify pitcher breakdown, there's a lot to like. Lots to like about this big dude. And I'll tell you one thing, fastball command, he's not afraid. He's got a four-seamer and a two-seamer. One of the things, like a lot of young pitchers, control its emotions. Uh, he's been doing a much better job of that. Every start, he's gotten better and better. And the big key, be careful of that guy hitting on the on-deck circle, Juan Soto. That guy is hashtag danger lurking. <laughs> I'm anxious to see that matchup because Manoa is oozing with confidence. He's a rookie, but he knows he belongs. And I can't wait to see him challenge Soto. But first, after the Robles popper, it's Alcides Escobar. You know, the more and more you look up this Blue Jay starting pitching, the more and more you like it. But Noah's really settled in. He's been a force. And there's a breaking ball that gets away from him. But it starts at the top with Ryu, who's been really terrific. Jose Barrios, they acquired the trade deadline. Steven Matz was off to a flying start. And Robbie Ray has really turned it around in 2021. The Blue Jays feel really good about where they're at. They're going to have to run down the Red Sox or the Yankees for that wild card spot. Weak contact to short. Bo Bichette puts away Escobar. Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud sets us up with the arsenal of Alec Manoa. You'll see heavy dosage of fastballs, especially if it's working early. The four seamer and the sinker, and then the slider is mine. Yeah, he's going to throw over 50, um, somewhere around 55 to 60 percent fastballs. And if he has a good one, he has that four seamer and that two seam sinker. It almost acts like two different pitches. This guy has all the goods, and one of the things that uh, when you look at him and you watch him. Very composed. He doesn't spend a lot of time in between pitches. Very decisive on what he wants to do, and he is in attack mode for the minute he takes them out. This is the premier matchup of the night. Manoa against Soto. And if you're in the live chat, the YouTube creators, let's hear it. What do you think is going to happen in these battles throughout the night? Lighting it up since the All Star break. Not a ton of lineup protection anymore. I know national fans are probably saying, oh, huh, but it was such a treat. We were here early this afternoon being back at the ballpark, getting a chance to watch Juan Soto take batting practice. It was a clinic, Scott. I don't think if he took 45 swings, he hit one ball from center field to right field, constantly thinking up the middle left field. Doesn't get very many good pitches to hit without Trey Turner in that lineup. Pretty good changeup right there from Manoa. See that shake of the head. One of the things this guy does really well too. He'll get a little bit more spread out with two strikes. Don't let that spread out look fool you. He still is very dangerous and is lethal to hit it to any part of the ballpark. Number 22, 22 years old. Manoa, youngster as well. Having a big time rookie season. Last start really was riding the fastball, and actually the velocity ticked up as his start continued. Manoa was taken 11th overall back in 2019. He was a star at West Virginia University. He has just blossomed in the major leagues. Some guys come up, it takes them time to get adjusted. I think Manoa has come up and said, I feel better here than I did in the minor leagues. And he rings up Soto. Wow, what a pitch. Nasty two seam fastball a la Greg Maddox. Tremendous pitch, locks up one of the best hitters in the game. And sits down the side in order with a nine pitch burst. Manoa can bring it. Hernandez will lead things off for the Blue Jays here in the top of the second. As Teoscar gets into one, left center field, and it is gone. Number 20 on the season for Teoscar Hernandez to tie it up here in the second. There's that jacket. He broke it out early again. So Britchick in center with Springer out of the lineup. Randall hitting 251, 19 homers. 
Richick sits on a fastball, drives it to deep left, and it's going to go. Second home run of the inning for the Blue Jays, and they take a 3 to 1 lead. So, number 20 for Teoscar Hernandez, and now number 20 for Randall Grichik. Five different Blue Jays have now hit 20 or more home runs on the season. First batter that Ramirez will face in this game is Corey Dickerson, who is one for three. Dickerson drives the ball to right field, and he got it all. Dickerson with his first home run as a Blue Jay to extend the lead. It is 7 to 1. That'll bring up Marcus Simeon. Now Marcus Simeon first pitch swinging and drives it out for home run number 27 on the season. The fourth home run of the ball game for the Blue Jays. The lead is 8 to 3. Welcome back to Nationals Park scoreless game as we go top two. Veteran lefty Brad Hands was with the Nationals the first four months of the season, then was traded to the Blue Jays at the deadline. So he's played with Juan Soto for four months and now has played with Vlad Guerrero Jr. for the last two and a half weeks. I had an opportunity to ask him earlier today how he would compare and contrast the two of them in terms of how they go about their business. He said the two have a lot in common and mostly that they're not just home run hitters they hit for average and they also reach base at a high clip but he also said both Soto and Vlad prepare at a very advanced level especially for guys their age as there's a ball ripped in a right field by Grichik. he said they know the pitcher's strengths and weaknesses and also go up with a very precise game plan and that's a similar message that Riley Adams the Nationals catcher who was traded for Brad Hands, told me about the two of them as well he said they're both very simplistic in their approach and he meant that in a complimentary way they don't go up there bogged down with a lot of information they have a very precise way of the uh, way that they want to attack that at bat what they're looking for so two very young very talented hitters on each of these teams. Thanks Dan they're naturals Dan please Zach. It is. It's natural talent when you watch Juan Soto. You can't really appreciate how good this guy is until you watch him a few days in a row. Uh, just unbelievable recognition of, of pitches to swing at. That last pitch that he struck out was a nasty two seam fastball that Manoa threw, but he's just an incredible young player. And the Nats are going to be faced with the dilemma here coming up soon. They're going to have to open up the bank and pay this guy. And I'm not sure on the open market. I, just exactly what he's worth Scott I mean he brings a dimension of power and speed and average he just brings so many things to the table that it's going to be hard to keep this guy I mean there are a lot of teams that would love to have this guy in their lineup and it's the age that's a huge factor too is that there's so much more potential great baseball ahead of him he's only 22 years old he's going to be a free agent in a few years if he gets there. Espinal fouls that one down the third base line. Grichik started off the second inning with a base hit to right. This has been a nice replacement player for Cabin Biggio over at third base. Cabin's on the IL with some neck issues. I pointed out how good Espinal has looked on defense this year. And Charlie Montoya, Blue Jays manager, went back at me and said, yeah, and do you see his 298 batting average? I mean, this has been as good as it gets for a player filling in for one of our mainstays. Really, when you look up and down at this Blue Jays lineup, you're getting a good look at Randall Grichik right there. Espinal is filled in admirably. Their starting rotation, which we talked about earlier at the top of the inning, is solid. If their bullpen can continue to get out to the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, they're going to cause a lot of problems. Espinal lifts one to center. Robles has it for out number one. You know, but that. It's a good look at Vlad Jr. right there. Okay, so Dan, I need some help. This is probably the most pressure you're going to feel all night long. This is a tough one. We've been talking about this for a while. Let's line up our first YouTube poll question. Make sure you chime in. It's on your screen, your phone, your computer. One at bat. Game on the line. We just showed you four of the best in the biz. Who are your take? Who are you taking? Who's your hitter? So we're not looking for the best overall player. We're looking for the best hitter, like the clutchness. Who is the guy that you would select if your season's on the line? Vladdy Jr.'s on the list. So is Soto. We're seeing both of them this evening, and then we'll add Otani and Tatis to the mix as well. You first. 
I'm going Juan Soto. He, he marvels me. And the guy you're looking at, Vlad Jr., I get it, Blue Jays fans, if you're a little angry. Had a chance to see Juan Soto in action in October baseball in the World Series in the postseason. No moment is too big. He would be a nightmare for any pitcher. Controls the strike zone, doesn't swing at bad pitches. Make a mistake, he'll make you pay. Here's Reese McGuire hitless in his last 17. But the polls up on your screen, I mean, get in on the action. And then we'll take some of the comments in the live chat as well from our creators. Good luck with this one. That is clock to right, and it's missed. Soto can't grab it, and the Blue Jays will set up runners on second and third here with just one out in the second. As Reese McGuire comes through his first hit in 17 tries. That's a tough play for a right fielder. Kind of that line drive, that humpback liner. Soto froze a little bit. You get caught a little bit in between. You see him, he's not sure if he should leave his feet. Kind of caught in between, and Richick had to hold up in case the catch was made, was only able to get to third base. Blue Jays in business, second and third, and one out here in the top of the second. Double number 14 on the season for McGuire. And the first ever big league at bat from big Alec Manoa. How does he look? He looks big. <laughs> <laughs> he looks as big in the batter's box as he does on the mound. Every pitcher thinks they can hit. He's going to get a chance right here. Let's try to put, the, put it in play. Nationals have the infield in. Six minor league at bats. One hit in college, I'm told. I think if you're Eric Fetty right now, the safest thing to do. It's awful difficult to hit a breaking ball, when, especially when you've never had a, a major league at bat. I think the last thing you want to do if you're Eric Fetty right now is happen to hit his bat with a fastball. Tendency right here to go ahead and go after him with the breaking ball. There's a heater. 95 an hour sinker. This is where I think a spot yet. If you're a Fetty right now, you have to get greedy. Try to throw that breaking ball something hard down and away to try to get a swing and a miss. Fetty goes to the curveball 17% of the time. That's your call here. I think he have to go with a breaking ball right here. Go for a strikeout. That's the idea. The only problem is that ball never really was kind of a non-competitive breaking ball off the plate. It was so far almost into the left-handed batter's box. Danger is lurking. Semyon Bichette, Guerrero Jr., Teoscar, first four in the lineup coming up for Toronto. You know, guys, big Scott. You look at that bat. And it looks like a toothpick in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> and he rings him up. 96 down the pipe, two away. Well, National League Baseball in its finest. Blue Jays getting a little bit of a dose of it there. Second and third, one out. It's one of the nice things about being particularly a starting pitcher in the National League. That nine hole spot at times conveniently rolls around to try to get yourself out of some trouble. And Fetty is one out away from stranding a couple more base runners. It's Semyon goes after the first pitch. Nothing in one. Semyon struck out first time around. Two K's so far tonight for Fetty. We've watched Fetty for years, and he's usually towards the bottom in terms of strikeouts per nine innings, but he's picked up the pace this year. He threw a really good breaking ball to strike Semyon out. First hitter of the game. Hard break, sweeping breaking ball that was down and away. Something you'll notice with Fetty is he doesn't get much chase. His chase rate is towards the bottom in Major League Baseball. So when he's striking out batters, it's often in the zone. Well, a lot of the reason why, Scott, the last two pitches are a reason why. That breaking ball, like the one he threw one and one to Manoa, it never really appeared to be in the strike zone. It starts off so far off the plate, 
that as a right handed hitter you've already eliminated that that balls outside. He's thrown some fastballs that have been up and away. The 0 1 pitch to Marcus Simeon it's so far out of the zone that he doesn't get a lot of chase. And it's to the hot corner. Simeon bounces out to third and there he goes again. Eric Fetty strands two more runners for Toronto putting on the pressure but not converting scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Atlanta. Ansby Swanson got jammed his first time up. Swing and a fly ball. Well hit to center. Robles as far as he can go. Goodbye. Three nothing Atlanta. Robles at third. Thomas at first. One out. Soto waits. That's a laser to left. Duval to his right. And scoring easily is Victor Robles. And this game is tied. Raymond a single in the first inning and then a check swing tap out his last time up swing and a high fly ball hit toward the Braves bullpen at the track at the wall Freddie puts the Braves in front number 25 for Freeman Austin Riley's two for two he scored a run as Riley cranks one to deep left that one's a no doubter back to back anything you can do I can do better Austin Riley's got 25 homers now it's Atlanta six in Washington three now Carter Keeble hitting fifth in the order serving one to right great swing Soto scores Bell coming around Carter key boom drives in two and it's a six to five game Braves lead six five Will Smith is going to come on swing and a step by Riley the peg and the Braves win it. This is brand new. Fans watching the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube now have their choice of listening experience. You can just click the gear icon in your player, choose audio tracks, and select either the primary broadcast, that's us, or take your pick of the home and away radio calls. All the audio is seamlessly integrated on your favorite devices, so don't miss a minute of the action right here on YouTube. Nice and easy. Last of the second, the Nationals going with Bell, Hernandez, and Keyboom up against Alec Manoa, who's coming off a nine pitch one, two, three first. So here's Bell, who's a bit cold lately. It's up to 19 homers on the season after a very slow start. And he'll pull that one to Vladdy Jr. For the first down. Yeah, you can see why the Blue Jays love Manoa. Pretty simple play there by Vlad Jr. Had a chance to talk to Buck Martinez, voice of the Blue Jays radio, and he told me this afternoon the improved play, Vladdy at first base. Says his range has gotten better. He's a very accurate thrower, not afraid to cut down a lead runner on a bunt play. Try to turn that 3 6 3 double play. Turn himself into an all around terrific player. He trimmed weight. He got himself in much better shape. Yadiel Hernandez takes a breaking ball for a strike. Vladdy Jr. said, My bad, even to his teammates. You know, I need to be more accountable. And ever since, you've seen a player who looks better at the plate, better on D, like you're mentioning. The base running has improved, of course, via sprint speed. This is the 33 year old rookie from Cuba one of the clubhouse favorites Yadiel Hernandez. And he connects on the 0 2 drives it to deep right and it is gone. Yadiel Hernandez muscles up on an 0 2 pitch to put the Nationals on the board first. Home run number five on the season. His manager says he has sneaky pop and he snuck one just over the wall in right field into the Nats bullpen. Get a good look at it here. Curveball 
eighty one miles an hour kind of a little bit of a cement mixer for Manoa you can see that big red dot not a very tight rotation made it easy for Hernandez just to get ahead of the bat to it one swing of the bat one nothing Nats. it didn't sound like he hit it on the sweet spot but he's a strong dude that leads us to Carter Kibu third baseman gaining confidence former first round pick in 2016 by the Nats. Yeah, this is a I really think this is a very important stretch to the end of the year. There's a good look at Hernandez after that solo shot. I think the Nationals want to find out what kind of player they have in key boom. They've really hyped them the last couple of years. You know in the year two home runs they think eventually the power will come. Into center and that will drop. Let's go back to the homer. See, gets the bat hit out in front of it. The curveball makes it easy, kind of that rolling curveball. We've seen some really good ones from Manoa. That one just kind of rolled in her third, right in that happy zone for a lefty. He's hitting 377 since the All Star break. He's been picking up starts lately and thriving. He can hit. He was a star in Cuba for years. Here comes Luis Garcia. And you wonder if Manoa should even really be working anything but that fastball. We see the two seamer with a ton of bite. Well, really, he's made one mistake the curveball, the solo home run. But I think one of the things he wants to do, Scott, he wants to mix in all of his pitches. Threw a really good curveball in that bat to Josh Bell. We've seen a sinker. He's four, two fastballs, a four seamer that he rides up in his zone. When you watch him, like that one there, 92 miles an hour, his ball has a lot of late life. It's not a fastball that's going to blow up a radar gun. He's not going to be 97 to 100, but he has that late life, late carry. Has good sink when the ball's down in the zone, good ride up in the zone when he throws that four seamer. So his 92 93 plays almost 96 97. It has that little extra gear and straight carry. On the ground, this could be two. Semi into Bichette, firing to Guerrero Jr., and they will double him up and retire the side. The Nats strike first. Yadiel Hernandez lining up a hanger and doing some damage on Alec Manoa. One nothing Nats after two. Pitch hit hard on the left side. Diving stop made by Espinal. Pops up, throws to first. Dig by Vladdy to get the out. Good work on both ends of that problem. Sharp one hopper to short. Bichette, what a play in a stretch by Guerrero at the other end. But what a play by Bo Bichette to retire Jack Mayfield. Springer lifts one to left field. This ball is well struck and it's gone as well. Number 15 on the season for Springer and it is two to nothing Blue Jays. Springer turns on another one and this will be his second home run of the night. Great throws. And the pitch is slugged in the air straight away center field. Springer back through the track at the wall he leaps and he makes the catch. George Springer with a leaping grab at the wall and straight away center field. He robs Torrens of extra bases. Leading 3-2 looking for more. This one to left field deep and a grand slam for Teoscar Hernandez. The first of his major league career and the Blue Jays now lead seven to two. Well, he said, 
He told me, he told me, the first piece possible. Right in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Vladdy Jr.'s mic'd up for us this evening. Oh, Dan Plesak, you gotta love Yeah, it. that's probably Manoa before the game telling Vladdy, he says, listen, I'm gonna get a first pitch hater. I'm gonna come out of my shoes, and if he <laughs> throws it there, I'm gonna nail one. It's a little bit tougher when that game starts and you're standing in the batter's box. <laughs> More of that gold coming your way throughout the evening. And his buddy Boba shuts up and then Vladdy on deck. And he went around. A ball and a strike. Bichette's aggressive. Hits the baseball hard. He's already one of the best slugging shortstops. In the game. Had a rough Sunday afternoon, five at bats, five strikeouts in Seattle. Thought that pitch right there was a little bit off the plate. All five swinging and missing, too. So I'm sure he'd like to get things going back in the right direction. Terrific young player. Yeah, he was DHing on Sunday, still battling some shin soreness from some foul balls last homestand. Let that ball travel deep right there. Good fastball from Fetty. 95 miles an hour. Bo Bichette, lightning quick bat. Almost appears like he's having a bat where he really wants to see the ball, Scott, deep into the zone. Almost trying to say, I'm going to try to get myself jammed. You often hear hitters and, and pitchers alike. The last thing you want to do is you, you want to be in that in between. You're a little bit behind the heater and out front of the breaking ball. And he'll connect into center. Bo Bichette has himself a single to lead off the third. Terrific at bat. And I think it started early on trying to let the ball travel. Hey, let's go back to the last out, the double play. You know, Marcus Simeon has played shortstop his entire career, moved over to second base. How about this pivot right here? 4-6-3. Making second base look easy. See him get it with a nice pivot. More importantly, a great feed to Bo Bouchette and a strong throw to Vlad over. Inning, inning, 4 6 3 double play. Well done by the Jays. I mean, if you want to watch fundamentals, Marcus Simeon is your guy. Just a seamless transition to second base this year for Toronto. Here's Vladdy. Oh, he was swinging for Toronto. Yeah, he was trying to get the Blue Jays to lead right back there. Big swing. He had a ground ball base hit through the right side back in the first. If Shohei Otani wasn't doing what he's doing this year in the American League, and you're looking at number two, I would think, in terms of MVP voting. It's hard to look anywhere past Vlad if you're going to throw out Otani into the equation. He's hitting for power. He's hitting for average. First at bat took a 3 2 pitch that vacated hole. The shift was on. Second base was wide open. Just hit a hard ground ball for a base hit. Very advanced offensively. Got the smile. You know, he was the leading vote getter in fan balloting, the youngest ever to receive that honor for the All Star game. 22 years old, maybe a little Miguel Cabrera in his hitting game. Off and running is Bichette, and here's the chuck to second, and Bo picks up the stolen base. How about Bo Bichette? That's his 18th stolen base on the year, and he's yet to be caught 18 for 18. And a good job too there by Vlad not to swing. You can see what a great jump they gets. A couple of step walking lead. No chance for Riley. To throw him out. There it is. Perfect. The most attempts without being caught. 
among base runners. It's almost like Fetty knew it was going to happen too. I mean he checked a few times and we've spoken to elite base runners who say hey if you're going after me a few times I'm going to make you pay. Yeah the issue sometimes I guess if you look at it this from that point of Boba shed on second base now you're going to give Vlad anything to hit right you've got you have a base open if you're Fetty right now it doesn't get any easier with Teoscar Hernandez on deck a good two seam fastball right there boring down and in to Vlad. You just was asking the home plate ump about the pitch. Do you think he was checking to see if it would have been in the zone? Exactly. Uh, it, we've seen Fetty when he gets in counts like this too, Scott. He'll go to that breaking ball, that big sweeping breaking ball pitch that he struck Simeon out to start the game. Missed with the heater. Look at the Blue Jays this year with runners in scoring position best in baseball 284. Kind of notice already that pitch total starting to get its way up there. Next pitch will be the 54th pitch. To get through two plus innings. Payoff. Walked him. Blue Jays fans are coming in strong tonight. One AB to win a game. Who's your guy? Vladdy Jr. takes the pie. 53% of the vote. And you can see Otani, Soto, and Tatis all in a similar range. But Blue Jays fans are watching tonight, Dan. Boy, you're rubbing it in, too. I went with Juan Soto. You can't go wrong with any of the four, and I can completely understand Vlad Guerrero. We've seen two at bats. He ran a 3 2 count, hit a bolt for a base hit. Right there, another 3 2 count. How about Shohei Otani? 39 home runs. And oh, how about a uh, 2 9 3 ERA in 17 games starting? Two horse race for the AL MVP right now, Otani Vlad, Vlad Jr. And he's got a shot at the Triple Crown. You would be the youngest player to win it in Major League history. And also, some of our YouTube creators chiming in. Austin Kleschka said, Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. I want Otani. The fumble saying, oh, come on, Otani all day. Sports Gaming Universe. I mean, Soto has a trophy already, right? I'll go with him. And then a crash tag, who we'll talk more about later, said, I got to agree with Dan there. It's Soto for me, but it's close. Vlad Jr.'s right behind him on that poll for me. I love the question because we're not looking at the other parts of the game, just straight up hitting 1AB to save your day. Who is it? I mean it, it's that is such a difficult when, when you're talking about those four choices. How about Fernando Tatis he spends what 10 12 days on the injured list comes back in Arizona comes back and hits two home runs. He's been able to do that a couple of times this year where he's missed some time with that shoulder injury and it's come back and he it's like he hasn't missed the beat. There's a check over to Bichette it looks like. He got knocked in the shin which is a bad spot for him lately those shins both of them are sore from foul balls and you can see him in some pain now. I think he's like really yeah. come on he, he's probably thinking like oh, I should have wore the shin guards while I was running the bases. <laughs> you see Fetty kind of cuts this one off right here. Oh yeah there it is right off the left kind of lower shin bone maybe above the ankle a little bit. Also Garcia's glove just kind of staying put and colliding with the shin. <laughs> See if Bo cuts down that lead here this time. 2-0 to Teoscar Hernandez. You kind of feel like right now Eric Fetty he's kind of flirting with danger. Running some deep counts. 56 pitches. He was aggressive in the first inning. But it seems like this Blue Jays lineup it will do that to you. You come a little tentative as a pitcher. You're afraid to throw that fastball in over the plate. You start aiming and guiding and next thing you know you're 1 0 2 0 2 1 right where the Blue Jays would like to have you. To Oscar off of Fetty's glove and it looks like it's going to turn itself into an infield hit and it is although Josh Bell wants it reviewed. Bichette to third Guerrero Junior up to second. And it was close to Oscar Hernandez with an absolute rocket that was halted a bit by Fetty. Boy this was a, this was really a good play by Fetty just to get a glove on it. It's just a reactionary play when you're a pitcher. 
All your momentum is going towards home plate. Here's a good look at it right here. This ball, fortunately, it's hit at his glove side, which knocks it down. This is a bullet. A great play by Garcia. Almost like that soccer guy that scores a goal. Watch this slide right here. Throws it from both knees. Ooh, I think Looks he like got he's him. out too. 112 miles an hour off the bat, and if you're unfamiliar with exit velocity and what's a good number, that's a very healthy number. Yeah, I think this one's going to be overturned too, Scott. That's pretty it easy is. call. Luis Garcia with a little slide and a nice throw on the money to get Hernandez. And he's happy about it. Some hard contact off the bat of the Blue Jays here in the third. Bichette now standing over at third. Guerrero Jr. at second. Here comes Corey Dickerson, who's 0 for 1. Dickerson came over from the Marlins in a trade a couple months back along with Adam Simber who's been a very valuable bullpen addition. This is just a professional hitter at the plate who just lost his bat. <laughs> Into the Nats dugout. And I think he needs a bat. This is a terrific cutter in. See Dickerson trying to get the head of the bat out. It just kind of slips right out of his hands. Fortunate for some fans sitting behind that dugout with that netting. Rebounds right into the Nats dugout. And we're back. Looking for more success, success with runners in scoring position, like many of his teammates have had. He chokes up a lot with two strikes. Something he picked up a few years ago. Look defensively right here. Third base playing halfway up through the middle part of the diamond, playing, playing back if you're Dickinson right now, if you could just Hook something on the ground. Nationals giving him pretty much an RBI. Good job of pitching there by Fetty. The way the Nats are set up defensively, that's kind of the hardest ball to pull hit towards that second base side. Anything too seen running away. Pitching the way your defense is lined up behind you. They're making him work in this third inning, and let me tell you, it is hot and muggy out there tonight. He chokes up on the bat as much as any hitter in baseball with two strikes. Yeah, that was a good pitch by Fetty up and out of the zone. There isn't anything that Dickerson could do with this one. This is another cutter. You can see it's almost neck high. Thomas Hawk almost chopping down on it like a lumberjack. <laughs> hey, George Springer on the 10 day IL and Marcus Simeon. Getting a good chuckle out of that last swing by Dickerson. And this time to the right side, it'll bring home a run. Fetty covering first. Dickerson is out, but Bichette scores and evens up the game at one apiece. An RBI ground out for Corey Dickerson. Productive out and a productive at bat, able to fight off some pitches. Finally gets one that he likes. The Nats playing that right side of the infield back, a simple ground ball to first, and the Blue Jays have tied things at one.
Guerrero's at third. Here's Gritchick. He single back in the second. Four hits tonight for Toronto. You touched on it, Scott. Blue Jays making Fetty work, particularly in this inning. He's had some difficulties this inning getting that breaking ball over. See some good life on his fastball. Pretty good change of speed right there. 79 mile an hour curveball. Gritchick fouled that one right off the end of the bat. That's on you can see hot muggy night here in D.C. 66 pitches 25 in the first. Throwing his 25th here of this inning here in the third. And Gritchick makes contact. It's Bell. It's Fetty. It's the same play again. And that will do it for the third. The Blue Jays add a run and even up the game at one. The RBI ground out from Corey Dickerson as we head to the bottom of the third inning in D.C. So now Victor Robles and Robles swings and hits one in the air to deep left field moving Dominic Smith back has a play out of the warning track and missed the ball up against the wall. So rounding third is Riley Adams coming to the plate and the throw will not be in time. Soto center field that ball's on the ground skipping deep into the gap. Robles home, Escobar to third. Soto delivers RBI number 62, and the Nats are on top. Well hit, sliding to his right. Garcia, quick exchange with the hands. Nice play. He's the master of the slide on one knee play, isn't he? Nice play. That ball hit hard up the middle. Oh, Escobar, nice grab. Shovels to Garcia. Oh, how about that for a 6-4-3? Wow. That's one of the best double plays of the year. And the table is set in the first inning. And that ball driven out to left center. See you later. Once over a line drive, the ballpark couldn't hold it. He's up to 61 RBIs and his 19th puts the Nats on top. Live on YouTube presented by Spotify, the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan experience. Watch all new episodes free only on Spotify. Scott Braun, Dan Plesak, Dan Kolko. We are live from Nationals Park. And hey, YouTube creators in the live chat section right now is your chance to get some questions in there for me to relay over to Jose Barrios. Big time trade pickup at the deadline by the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll chat with him in just a sec. Alec Manoa back to work in the home third against eight nine and one for the Nationals. It starts with Riley Adams. You know one of the things the Blue Jays have done well particularly the last few years Scott they're drafting. Go back to Manoa. 11th pick overall in the 2019 draft out of University of West Virginia. Paying dividends in a hurry. Normally it takes. Starting pitchers for the most part a couple of seasons in the minor leagues to get established. One thing that Charlie Montoya told us right off the get go his mound presence. He acted like a guy that believed he was there. He should be pitching in the big leagues. Had a chance I watched his debut against the Yankees. He was terrific in that debut. Six innings struck out seven. The Blue Jays won that game two to nothing and it's been just about every game he's gotten better at some elements. He's ruffled some feathers not afraid to pitch inside. Looks like so far the Blue Jays have hit a home run with this first rounder. Most guys probably don't want to mess with him. <laughs> now nah, he's a big dude and, and I tell you what I like about him Scott. I talked about it earlier. He, he's no business. You can see by his mannerisms on the mound. He gets it. He's ready. He's very decisive in what he's doing. Likes his fastball. It's not an overpowering fastball but it plays much better than the gun readings. In a day and age where we're seeing so many young pitchers that are 
maximum effort. Ball one, ball two, and a pitch count is up. Going into the third inning right now, 25 pitch is very manageable. Adams over Semyon, and it's a single in the third. And as promised, Jose Barrios joining us right now for our Spotify interview. Dan mentioned, hey, you make nice draft picks. That gives you the ability to make great trades like this one. Jose joins us right now live on YouTube. Jose, great to chat with you and our first conversation with you as a Toronto Blue Jay. What's the Jay experience been like for you? Hey, thank you guys for having me tonight here. It's always fun. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, having fun with these guys here. You know, they, they like to enjoy every every game out there so it's good when you play and pitch with guy behind you like that so I'm feeling really really good so far. Jose with a trade deadline approach did you have an idea that you would be traded from the twins? Uh, you know uh, on my man I never got that like I don't never see myself get out you know of the Minnesota Twins clubhouse but uh, my my you know my my work of group has been uh, teach me and prepare myself to to that moment. So yeah, I expect because my A and all that guys explain me when and why they're gonna train me. Were you happy when it was to the Toronto Blue Jays? Uh, you know, always is tough. You know, and you know, for a guy like me, I've been with the Minnesota Twins all my career. But you know, came to to group like this. You know, they they it's a, they are a group like they have a lot of talent, and obviously they can can do a lot of good good thing out there. So now we came here, we through uh, to this group, and uh, we can help to, to make a lot of good things. So it's, I motivate me, and I feel like excited to, to do it. You look good in the uniform, and we'll get our first question from a YouTube creator, Sports Gaming Universe. Jose, Twins fan here, so sad to see you go, but also excited to follow your career now in Toronto. How has the early adjustment gone so far in Toronto? Is there anything new for you? Do you have to find? New food spots, how's your new teammates? You look good in the uniform, like I mentioned. The blue looking great, and you're on a playoff contender, which I'm sure you're thrilled about. Yeah, you know, I feel good about it. You know, blues look good. Uh, the, also, uh, this is my favorite uh, uh, color. That's what my son say. Hey, you, you now you got your favorite colors. It's red <laughs> blue. So, yeah, and, um, you know, I been meet those guys. They, like I say, they are really good. Group, so they they give me a lot of a, a, a good welcome. So, but yeah, like you say, with the food was different, but they still had a, like you know meat, chicken, fish. So we got uh, too many options to, to try to get it myself healthy and strong. You know, Jose, from pitcher to pitcher, I'm often asked about all the 30 different ballparks. I always found that that mound at the Rogers Center was one of the best mounds to pitch off of. How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable pitching off of that mound? Uh, yeah, I feel really, you know, really good. Uh, I like pitch there because the fans, you know, is, they they like baseball, so we got motivation on that. So yeah, I've been pitching good so far in that mound. Victor Robles was just hit by a pitch. Let's see if it was on the was that the left hand there? Check left wrist. He'll head to first. That'll move up Riley Adams to second. Adams led off the third inning with a hit. Betty tried to bump with two strikes, so he's a strikeout victim. There's Robles, little smile, feeling better. Escobar coming up next. We're chatting with Jose Barrios in this bottom of the third 1 1 game at Nats Park. And here's the next question from a YouTube creator. Austin Kleschka says Hey, Jose, you've played with many powerful hitters Snow, Cruz, Donaldson. And now Vlad Jr. So those four in a home run derby, <laughs> who do you have winning? Wow. That, 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 that one tough one. Escobar is going to find some open space and he comes through. Adams come on down. Robles come on down. That'll bring two in for the Nationals and make it 3-1 on the Escobar two RBI double. Another look at it right here. Two seam fastball intended to be in. It was up. Escobar drives this right into that vacated gap there in left center field. 
Gretchik has a long way to get over the speed of Robles. He scores all the way from first. All right, now you've had plenty of time to think about your answer. Yeah, yeah. Jose. I, I say, you know, <laughs> that's a tough one, but I think it can be like a tight, tight uh, matchup because, you know, uh, Cruz, Vladi, Donaldson, you know, they can hit, you know, they, they got a lot of power. But, you know, now I'm in Toronto Blue Jays, so I pick Vladi. There you go. I like it. And Vladi's your boy now. Yeah. Hey, I know he just gave up the double here, but Alec Manoa has been special on the mound as a rookie. Looking like he's been doing this for a long time, but right now, Manoa is only making his 12th big league start. He's probably been the best rookie starter in the American League, if not in all of Major League Baseball. And this is the marquee matchup, too. Juan Soto watches ball one. What have you seen from Alec Manoa that stands out? Because you remember your rookie days. Is it similar to what you're seeing from him, or is he just stepping in going, hey, guys, I'm here? Yeah, that's how that's, that, that, that's what he's been doing so far. You know, I've been here like two weeks. And he's been like uh, he's he he act like uh, he been here like for you know many years in the building. So that's good for him. You know, that's how that's that's what he he you know he bring in the mound. You know, a lot of confidence. He's a mature guy, so he can pitch the ball. You know, throw the ball whatever he want. And I think that's the big, big, the best key for him so far. Talk us through what he should be doing right now with Juan Soto. I mean, you know, this is one of the toughest ABs in yep. big league baseball. I mean, he is tough to get out. He knows his zone as well as anyone. What are you doing here? Yeah, he, you know, we, we guy like this, we just, you know, just attack him then, you know, just throw the ball over the play. Obviously, we, we comb confidence and just, you know, com uh, take confidence on our pitch and just throw it like that. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Like you say, he, he, he know the song, so he took it yeah. the ball. I thought you made the strikeout call right there, though. I mean, that was somewhat in there. It was similar to the pitch he <laughs> was rung up on his first at bat, that two seam fastball in. Manoa wants this one here. You can see that's a pretty good pitch. Yeah. Jose, we have a good look at it. I mean, that looked like strike three. <laughs> but, you know, the first at bat, they, they, they called that pitch, and Soto was mad, so maybe <laughs> Bayo was scared now. He's a scary dude. How about that one? No. Little up. Well, that's the thing, Jose, with Soto. You have to challenge him if you're actually trying to get him out because he's not going to chase. Yeah. Yeah. He's a guy he don't like chase. And also, he got a lot of confidence in, in the ball. So you have to attack, attack him, trying to to scare him. But I know he don't scare, but we, we look like we're trying to, to, to scare him. <laughs> and there's ball four. He has the lowest chase rate in baseball. And Soto, who leads the sport in walks, picks up another. That's not that bad of a walk with a base open right there. Two runs already in for the Nationals. If you're Manoa right now, he's able to get Josh Bell to roll one over his first time up. What are these conversations like? Well, this is right here going over what you want to do first and second and one out. Josh Bell, as I was touched on, his first at bat, he rolled over on a fastball in, rolled over to Vlad Jr. What do you think, Jose, when you're talking to Pete Walker on the mound for a little pause in this spot? What's he saying? Yeah, you know, first of all, he, he, he goes there to, to give a little break to Manoa. And then, like I say, yeah, he, 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 he talked about the plan, what we got, what we can do with this guy, you know, and we go for a ramble to the play, so that's the plan for now. Let me sneak in another question from one of our creators. He is our creator spotlight later. Quash tag. Hey, Jose, who was your favorite baseball player growing up? Yeah, my favorite baseball player was Ivan Rodriguez, the Pots. I like it. Yep. Even though you're a pitcher, the catcher was your favorite, which is a smart move because that needs to be your best friend in the big leagues, doesn't <laughs> it? Yeah, but I will, when, when I grow up, that's my that was my favorite uh, position to play, catcher. But but but. My dad don't let me be a catcher because I was too too short and skinny. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you didn't start pitching until 2012. How old were you? Yeah, I was uh, 17. That was my senior year. That was the first time you started pitching. Like, like full time, but yeah. I always be, be a pitcher like a pitcher like you know one inning per game. So I always throw hard. So just give me the ball and just throw the plate. When did you start pitching, Dan? 
senior in high school. I mean, I did it through Little League and all that, but really taking it serious. My senior year actually was basketball was my favorite sport. So, <laughs> and I think that may have helped you and I, Jose. You didn't throw a lot, of, waste a lot of pitches when you were 15, 16, and 17, like a lot of guys do. Yeah, like sometimes tough, but I still trying to extend my my position player days out there. You know, trying to have fun, but I know. I, I, got, I don't want to be available to hit in this level, so that was what I had. Yeah, that, was, my, that was my next question. <laughs> it, it seemed like Manoa, when he had his first at bat, he must have been talking before the game like he was going to get a fastball, he was going to turn it around, and he was called out looking on strike three on a heater right down the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was saying, like, I'm going gonna, I, I gonna to try to hit a homer. If, he, I gonna, you see, if he, I do it, I don't want to chat up my, you know, my, my, myself to the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get to hit tomorrow. Yeah, I have to. So, you know, like I say, you always fun, but it's still tough for me. <laughs> hey, one of the nice things, though, at least you're not going to hit off a of Max Scherzer, Ooh. right? That you know, would have been that would have not been a fun at bat, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what? That, that's, that, that that was the joke today so far for me. I asked who who, who gonna pitch tomorrow, and they say Scherzer. <laughs> 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 But I don't really know who's going to pitch tomorrow. So. I'll tell you, Josiah Gray, who actually is not an easy A-B. He's young. You know, he was a top prospect <laughs> pitching-wise in the Dodgers system. Oh, that's the guy who come from the Dodgers. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, and okay. that deal so. that sent Scherzer and Turner over to L.A. He was one of the prizes along with K. Bear Ruiz. So I'm, I got throw tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Josh Bell lifts one to right, and that will fall. And load up the bases. Escobar held up at third, Soto to second. It's a knock for Josh Bell. And Jose, we really appreciate the time. It's always such a pleasure talking to you. Enjoy your Blue Jay experience. Good luck with the rest of the season, okay? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, Jose Brios joining us for this half inning. Alec Manoa laboring a bit now as the Nationals have seemed to crack the code so far. Yeah, you know what? This is another cutter that's up in the zone. Josh Bell does a great job of keeping his hands and watch his ball. It's up and in. Kind of big, strong guy. Able to fist this one out to right field. And that doesn't get here. any easier here. Yadiel Hernandez homered off Manoa. Right, 44 pitches into the game. First at bat, Hernandez hit that breaking ball for a solo home run just inside the 335 sign. This time Manoa starts him with a fastball, but after a nine pitch one two three first from the Blue Jays rookie starter, I thought, wow, he's coming in with steam. He's coming off a career high 11 strikeouts, a brilliant performance against the Angels. We meet, might see something special tonight, but that's baseball. Yeah, in this inning in particular, that was a one two pitch that was called the ball to Juan Soto. That's really kind of turned this inning around. That cast powered by Google Cloud. Let's set up this long ball for Yadiel Hernandez. I mean, under 100 on the exit velo. He didn't get all of it, but he got enough of it in the right spot. Yeah, right now, if you're Alec Manoa, you want to try to get a little bit greedy, even though Hernandez runs well. Blue Jays playing a double play depth, playing about halfway. Hard hit ball. Try to be able to turn two. It won't be easy. Hernandez runs well. You know, that home run was his first ever off a breaking ball. He is a fastball crusher. He has huge splits. It's probably why Manoa went with the pitch at the time. This time misses on the fastball. And you can tell he's just not feeling the fastball like he was last time around. And he usually determines his game plan based on how he's doing it in the first few innings. Well, he's laboring a little bit in this inning. You get a look at good look at Charlie Montoya right there watching his young right hander. Listen, every game is a learning experience. It's a new experience. He's had some traffic in this game. He's been able to maneuver around. I think if you're a fan of the Blue Jays right now, if you can get out of this at worst, giving up one more run, you feel like the Blue Jays offense eventually will come around. When Yadiel Hernandez does big things, the Nationals win games. 419 in their 24 W's. We've seen him go deep tonight, fifth time of the year and of his career on an 0-2 pitch. 
This time he's got leverage. It's three and one. And he is swinging. It's on the ground. It's a tough play for Bichette. It gets past him. In comes Escobar. And Soto will score. And the throw to third is not in time. Bell is in there. It's a two RBI hit for Yadiel Hernandez. He's driven in three tonight to make it 5-1 Nationals. Boy, sometimes it can be a game of inches. This was literally maybe a foot or two away from being a potential 6-4-3 inning inning double play. See where Bo Bichette was. Fortunately, he's playing on the second base side of shortstop. Has to go a long way. This ball hit up almost straight shortstop. One of the negatives at times when you play that shift game, you leave that vacated hole there at shortstop. Good job by Josh Bell being aggressive. Head first slide to get from first to third, and that's still in business. And that one sails away, and that will score another run. Josh Bell will walk home, and Hernandez goes first to third. Manoa unraveling in the third, and now he's given up a career high six runs tonight. Yeah, this is this is unfortunately what happens when you have a young pitcher. A little bit, of, you make a good pitch, you get a ground ball that's almost straight up shortstop. You can see it first. Not a very good lead, really no reason to go over there and pick at first base. You can see that Hernandez maybe had a two and a half, three step lead over at first. Now you're in damage control mode. Men on third, one out. Worst start of his career. He's asking for a new baseball after spiking away, too. I mean, you can see he is visibly displeased right now. Trent Thornton is heating up. He might have some long work tonight. I will say this. If you've watched the Blue Jays this year, I would keep YouTube on your screen for a while still oh, this because is, this team can score. Oh, this bunches. is far from over. Particularly the Nationals, they've had some difficulties with their bullpen. That they've had a tough time getting length out of Eric Fetty, whose pitch count is, is also up. Key boom, blast one, deep left field. Dickerson looking for it. He has some room and he makes the catch, but that will drive in another run. A sack fly it almost left the yard for Key Boom, and it's 7 1 Washington. Well, this inning's been a six run inning for the Nationals. Here we see another hanging breaking ball, fortunately for Alec. This one stays in the ballpark. Dickerson goes about as deep as he can back to the warning track. Easy sack fly, and Nashville's in business. 21 pitches in the first two innings from Manoa. This is number 31 in on the hands. Pops up Garcia, but it's behind the net. A six run third for the Nats. We had a long chat with Dave Martinez earlier today. Nats manager, World Series winning manager, now going through a bit of a build back up roster wise. And he said, We've been playing competitive baseball. I know we've lost seven in a row. And that's a fair ball. Spinning weirdly into the glove of Guerrero Jr. Side retired, but Martinez's point was they're competitive. They're close losses, and right now, it's a big lead. 7 1, Nats. Make fun of me with my ball glove. Down into left field, but Moore coming in for it. Safe. <laughs> Makes a catch and uh, <laughs> adds a little bit to the end. The Ukrainian judge is not going to give him a high score for that. This round. <laughs> Simber was warming up when he came into the game. Watch the left of your screen, Simeon <laughs> <laughs> If only these guys could loosen up and have a little fun. They they like to have fun. 
Swinging a pop up foul and out of play. Falls down at home plate. Big swing. Big smile on his face. <laughs> Slipped to the ground after the, the big cut. <laughs> you don't see that very often. Uh oh, what is that? It's a man to spring for a rally. That's an alien. He's still got his buddy with him on his hat out in center field. And I can't call it a rally play, play Manis or alien or whatever the heck I called it before, but I, I've never seen anything like that. Nats have opened this thing up a bit at 7-1 as we go to the top of the fourth inning here in D.C. Some tough news for the Blue Jays earlier on today. Saturday in Seattle, George Springer went back on a ball and landed very awkwardly. Initially thought to be an ankle injury. Turns out it's a right knee sprain, which landed Springer on the 10-day IL earlier on today. We talked to Charlie Montoyo earlier on today, who's obviously disappointed for his team and for Springer. He says there's no timetable as of now for Springer's return. And guys, this is tough news for a hitter who's batting 315 with an OPS over 1150 since July 24th. He's earned two AL Player of the Week awards in the last month, and now he's out at least 10 days and possibly a little bit more. Yeah, thanks, Dan. And it was a rough beginning of this season for George. He couldn't get off the injured list with a couple issues, mostly quad. And he missed the first month, came back, then a right quad strain after four games. Eventually, though, when he was right, and that was the second half of the season, he was one of the best players in the game, like Dan mentioned, a couple player of the week awards. I mean, for as good as Vladdy Jr. has been, Dan Plesak, George Springer was carrying the team in the second half of the season. That's off the bat of Espinal, and it is sailing into the glove of Robles for out number one. Yeah, and George Springer, a high energy player, plays an impact position at center field. How about these notable offseason acquisitions? The Blue Jays, too, on this graphic, and Marcus Simeon and George Springer both have been as advertised, and one of the reasons why the Blue Jays are in the hunt here with about seven weeks to go trying to catch. The Yankees, the Rays, and the Red Sox. Well, then, can we queue up another poll, please? We'll get to it in just a sec as Reese McGuire watches the first pitch for ball one. We just showed you four big time pickups. Which acquisition has had the biggest impact? Arenado, Semyon, Lynn, Springer. See, we're putting in a little extra pressure, I think, on Blue Jays fans now because they have to choose between two. Slow hop. And Garcia puts away McGuire. Two down. So Blue Jays fans we know are going to show up big in the polls, Dan. But they have two players to choose from in Simeon and Spring. They do. And I'll tell you what, Marcus Simeon to me has been amazing. He's made the switch from shortstop to second base. He's made it seem routine. He's brought that big stick with him. Be interesting to see what happens. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year. As you touched on earlier, Scott took a one-year flyer, bet on himself for one season. Blue Jays would love to keep him in, but boy, he's going to be a hefty price tag. The day is done for Alec Manoa. And there's a first pitch strike from Fetty. Otto Lopez earned his way up to the majors, close to a 400 on base percentage in the minor leagues this year. Five ten, one hundred sixty pounder, making his MLB debut. First day being the bigs. Lopez out of the Dominican Republic, twenty-two years old. See what Fetty goes with on the one-two. He doesn't go. Two and two. That'll be it for Alec Manoa. Just three innings, seven runs charged to his account. Eric Fetty settling in here in the fourth inning. He's had some traffic most of the game. 
Bottoms able to wiggle through that third inning, only giving up the one run. Looked much better here in the fourth. Much better. Lopez strikes out in his big league debut. Betty retires the side in order and has a chance to give the Nats some innings tonight. And he's got a nice comfy lead at the moment mid four. Last summer, when America looked like this, Josh Bell read the room, then kept reading. What would you say to a young person about how reading has impacted your life in general? It's a huge foundation. Like the earlier you can find a love for reading, the better. If I'm gonna, you know, make a ripple in this, you know, big society, like this is my ripple. A ripple. Bell knows he can't change the country alone, but he'd like to see it more united. And he believes the way to get there is by becoming better people. Welcoming you into the first installment of Josh Bell's book club. Josh, how you doing? And I'm doing well. So he started a book club where they read mostly about self-improvement and positive habit building. It meets once a month for Zoom discussions and anyone can join. The catchphrase is books, betterment, progress. It's making a ripple. The goal from, from all this is when the world gets back to normal and, and we can start getting out into public spaces, I can start going to libraries. And, um, and I think that if I can encourage reading to the, like the younger generations, I think that's the end goal. Each week this season on our broadcast, we're going to focus on a YouTube content creator featured in our live game commentary section. Today, our creator spotlight shines on Quashtag Gaming, all things MLB the show. That's the content. He loves the Giants. His favorite moment was the Chicago walk-off home run and game five of the NLCS in 2014. And he's in there. Hey, say hello to us. And we've been seeing his comments throughout the night as very close to 10,000 subscribers who joined in 2015 and has racked up over a million views. Let's get him to 10,000 subscribers tonight. Crash tag, I'm on your side. All right, Trent Thornton is going to take over now for Alec Manoa, who was pinch hit for in the previous half inning. And Thornton has done some starting work in the past, mostly the four-seamer, the curveball, and the cutter. We last saw him on Thursday against the Angels, 11 pitches, two hits, and he picked up two outs. So here he goes. And the key is keep your team in this game because you know this offense is capable of doing big things. And it's a young Nationals team with a very inexperienced bullpen. Well, right now, the Blue Jays are trying to get some length out of Mr. Thornton. You touched on it, Scott. Has three starts on the year. He actually threw pretty well in the starting rotation. 3-3, three, 8 three, ERA and some starts. Blue Jays were hoping to get a little bit more length than three innings out of Manoa. Gave up seven runs. Nationals worked him over pretty good in that third inning, scoring six runs. But in National League, you're never out of it. You try to get some length here. They can get a couple of innings. They have another game tomorrow with a day off. Then the Blue Jays head back to Toronto to start a homestand. Riley Adams is one for one. He singled and scored in the last inning. How do you like that? Yep, the Blue Jays have the Tigers coming into Rogers Center over the weekend and the White Sox. So big homestand coming up, but games like this with the Yankees already winning, the Yankees Red Sox having a doubleheader, two seven inning games. The Yankees won game one of that doubleheader five to three. Games are so precious from this point of the season on, Scott, that this was one the Blue Jays looked up, the Nationals had been reeling. With the pitching matchup looked favorable, but Eric Fetty and the Nats have uh, made things a little miserable for the Bluebirds tonight. The Jays are 63 and 54 on the season. Here's the 2 2 to Adams. He stays alive. Toronto entering the night eight games back of first place Tampa Bay. As you mentioned, the Yankees pick up a win so far. That means Toronto's three games behind the Yanks. For third place in the division. And 
Oakland is holding that second wild card which the Jays have a shot at they enter the day four games back. That miss to Adams. That NL East, the complexion of that division has changed so much. The trade deadline, Yankees went out and made two big acquisitions. Anthony Rizzo was on the COVID IL right now, and Joey Gallo has hit some big home runs. Talking about big home runs. Riley Adams, go long. He muscles up for a solo shot. It's 8 1 Washington, second of the season for Adams, who was picked up in the Brad Hand trade with the Blue Jays. Pretty good night for Riley Adams, two for two. He's single in his first at bat. Takes one out here about eight rows deep. See the breaking ball here, a slider, kind of outer third and up. Big strong guy here gets full extension. This was a no doubter right off the bat. And his teammates have fired up. They've been working a lot with Adams on his offensive game. Dave Martinez told us earlier today the plan shorten up the swing and promote him pulling the baseball more. And it's working. It's about a half swing. Bichette will clean it up. And sit down Eric Fetty for out number one. You know if you're Dave Martinez right now, you're getting a look good look at Riley Adams. You look at like what what 22 and beyond break Steven Strasburg had surgery a couple of weeks ago. But there's some positives. You know, the Cubs and Nats kind of the trade deadline dismantled their team. But he looked towards the future, Eric Fetty, if he improves Josiah Gray, who they acquired in the Max Scherzer Trey Turner trade back for the Dodgers, has a big arm. I believe he'll be starting tomorrow night. Unfortunately, Joe Ross looks like he may have to have a season ending surgery at Patrick Corbin. But you look around the diamond, one of the things that the Nats have that not a lot of guys have, there aren't very many Juan Soto's walking around. And as we've seen some teams, look at the Tigers, they've gotten a lot better in one year. One thing Mike Rizzo has always been able to do, the Nats, they're about winning. It's a winning franchise, winning organization. Won the whole thing in 2019. I know it was hard for Mike Rizzo to part ways, particularly with Max Scherzer. Made a name here for the Nationals. Trey Turner's been such a terrific player, but baseball will go on. I think this guy you're looking at right here has a chance to be a really good player. He's yet to really find it he's consistently offensively. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's an elite defender, but I think they expect him to hit more. You, know, you watch this guy in batting practice. He looks like he could be a 15 to 20 home run legit guy, knock in 75 to 80 runs a year. As bad as it and bleak as it is right now for the Nationals, one or two moves in the offseason, they're not that far away from being competitive, particularly in that National League East where it's so up and down right now. Vladdy Jr. catches the popper. Robles goes down. Escobar coming up. And let's bring in Dan Colco for more on all of the moves that the Nationals have made. Now we're looking at the results on the field right now. It's working out for them tonight, Dan. But I mean, it was a 48 hour makeover. I'll call it a flash sale from the Nats after the 2019 World Series champs are now kind of turning things over. They are, Scott. I mean, a lot of those big names have left, including Jan Gomes, who went with Josh Harrison to the Oakland A's, which cleared the way for Riley Adams to get some playing time for Trace Barrera behind the plate as well. Two young catchers, and you mentioned the name of K. Bear Ruiz, who was the top prospect that they got back from the Dodgers in the Scherzer and Turner trade. So they go from having an established catcher behind the plate in Jan Gomes to some really intriguing young catchers to go along with a lot of other young talent as well. Yeah, we're seeing some of that young talent. Riley Adams with the home run for the Nationals in the home fourth to tack on. On another Washington a big on Toronto at the MLB game of the week live on YouTube two home runs tonight from the Nats bats Alec Manoa out of the game and the Nats rolling along right now at home in DC. Great baseball right there. And that one's going to go. 
That ball was crushed. And this is going to do it. Oh, my. Strike three. That was a great play. I talked about his fielding skills. That was remarkable. One Nats over the Blue Jays, and this team had quite a run. Second best winning percentage in baseball behind only the Dodgers from 2012 through 2019. It included five postseason appearances, four division titles, and ultimately a World Series championship in 2019 for the Nats. And now going through a bit, a bit of turnover at the moment, which we documented a bit a half inning ago, and the famous record I'll always remember from that 2019 season and Nats fans watching right now can recite it very easily as Simeon takes a pitch below the zone from Eric Fetty to start the fifth 19 wins 31 losses for the Nationals people were saying sell the sell the ball club player wise get rid of your big guys and start over well they didn't and it all worked out very nicely for them Simeon in foul territory Riley Adams will haul it in for the first out Mike Rizzo said no this is a very strong ball club I'm sticking with my guns and we saw the Nationals pick up a World Series title all right let's pay off this next YouTube poll which offseason acquisition has had the biggest impact Marcus Simeon wins it and we saw some of our YouTube creators echoing the sentiments of many Blue Jay fans right now like Healy six said Simeon has to be the most underrated pickup this past offseason I mean it's not hard to give him that title among those four right now for the consistency that he brings. He does it quietly, Dan, but he does it so well. Yeah, and he made the switch, Scott, from shortstop to second base and didn't complain about it. And he's helped this guy you're looking at right now, Bo Bichette. Blue Jays feel that long term, Bo Bichette's going to continue to get better and better at shortstop. Offensive skills off the chart, young player. Getting back to the Nationals, that magical run in 2019. It's just amazing how, you know, one play can change not only a season, but a, a postseason. That wild card game, Nationals and the Brewers, right? Ball gets by Trent Grisham, Josh Hader blows a save. Next thing you know, the Nats win that game in that crazy World Series where the road team won every game. You think about what had happened. Rendon filed for free agency. Steven Strasburg opted out. Nats had to re sign him. Max Scherzer was so good. Nice pitch from Fetty. As he fools Bichette and picks up another strikeout. Okay. Let's if it for this knock right here, who knows what would have happened? There he is, the man of Juan Soto off of Josh Hader. This ball gets by Trent Grisham. What looks so bleak heading into the late innings. The Nationals pull this one off and look at Juan Soto. That was really his coming out party. There's a lot more to come from that guy right here, 22. Don't feel bad for the Nats. There they are. They won it all in 2019. And they have guys like Soto and Patrick Corbin. They're one or two players. They're not that far away from being good again. And I know one thing, Mike Rizzo has a background in player development with the Arizona Diamondbacks when he started out. I'm sure that he's having his scouts and his staff across the board looking at players trying to get better. This is a team that expects to win every year. It's funny how their their trade deadline there's a good look at Ryan Zimmerman one of the original Nats. How they paralleled the Cubs two teams that had some expectations going into the season. Nationals started to play well as you touched on going into the mid part of June. 
And both the Cubs and the Nats end up being sellers right before the trade deadline. And so a lot of familiar faces. Kyle Schwarber who had a strong first year with the Nats found himself shipped off to the Red Sox. Trey Turner Max Scherzer off to the Dodgers. But there'll be better days ahead for the Nats. There's the two guys we talked about. Max and Trey Turner Juan Soto. Three players are going to go down as three of the better players ever put on a curly W uniform. Now Scherzer and Turner both in blue out west. Ball four to Guerrero. Vladdy walks for a second time tonight. He's reached base in all three plate appearances. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Big night so far for the Nationals offense. Here's Teoscar Hernandez swinging on the first pitch driving it deep to center. It's got a lot of lift to it and it is gone. Teoscar continues to light up the baseball and he makes it 8 3 on his 21st home run of the season. Well, that was a no doubter high, towering fly ball to center field. From our vantage point, way up here, this booth is way up here at Nationals Ballpark. Just a high towering lazy fly ball there you see he gets the put on the sport coat. Word on the street that sport coat kind of custom fitted to Vlad Jr.'s <laughs> tailoring. Another spinning breaking ball. Hernandez hits this one. Looked like way up to the moon. Victor Robles gets back but he has no chance in the Blue Jays trying to claw back. Third straight game with a homer for Hernandez. He's the hottest hitter in the American League right now. He can strut around the dugout and do whatever he wants. And he's been one of the better hitters in baseball since 2019. Now Dickerson hard on the ground, gobbled up by Bell, and he'll toss it over to Fetty for the out. That's it for the inning, but Teoscar Hernandez strikes again. And just like we've been saying all night, this one is not even close to over yet. They brought the jacket to D.C. and they're ready to use it again. It's 8-3, Nationals in front. Batting 219 with a homer, 12 runs batted in. Swings and he hits a soft liner into right field. It'll drop in and bounce. Fry on his way to third base and Fry goes in there standing up. There's a swing, there's a fly ball, right field. Hit pretty good. Lede back over his head into second base he goes. He'll pull up right there with a double. Another well hit ball by Fry turning on that and gone a home run. Triple double and now a home run. And listen to the ovation for Jeff Fry. And again, the fans, many of them on their feet. Foster to Fry, runner on the move. That ball is going to fall in the gap and go to the wall. Fry takes a look. He's going to stop at first and complete the cycle. An RBI single and a piece of Blue Jay history for Jeff Fry. What a moment here at Skydome. Bottom five coming up in D.C. And another new addition to the MLB Game of the Week for 2021. I know Dan Plesak wants one of these. But it's only for the players. Dan, the YouTube player of the game trophy. Fans watching on your mobile device, your computer, you can vote. We'll put that poll up later when we see how this one plays out. Player will receive the trophy during the post-game show. We'll talk to them after the game, so stay tuned. Player of the game polling later in the show here in D.C. 
and then they'll be holding that trophy. It gets in green. They hold it. They actually love it. You know, I'm all about breaking up the season in unique ways. I spoke to some of the White Sox players before they went to the Field of Dreams, and they said, I mean, this is what you circle on your calendar. So same way. I mean, this is a YouTube game that you get to play, and there's something extra to play for tonight, hardware-wise. It is. And you know what? All the players that have gotten that hardware after the game, too, they hold that thing up with pride. That's a pretty nice trophy to go ahead and put on your mantle. It's a little disappointed Scott I was hoping I would be able to take that home one day but I guess it's for players only that's right well maybe we'll do one for you at the end of the season you've racked up a, a few great YouTube broadcasts but here's Juan Soto getting hit from the first pitch of the night from new pitcher Kirby Snead the 26 year old looks like he just lost it yeah kind of overthrew that first pitch fastball up and in looks like it caught Juan Soto somewhere around the left elbow right elbow area. Two seam fastball just gets away. Looks like he has a little bit of an elbow guard protecting that right elbow. Smile on the face must be pretty good that it didn't get him flush. If you were going back to the pregame, beginning of our broadcast with Dan and I, we were going over the Kings of the North and all the medieval components here. There's Josh Bell swinging big, and he got under it. The left fielder Dickerson will put him away, and Soto will retreat to first. But you just think about all the armor in today's game worn by hitters, and I don't blame him. I would do the same if I'm at bat, and that's why Soto can head to first and end up there with a smile. Yeah, there's so much velocity in baseball right now. That first pitch just unfortunately got away from. Kirby the two seat fastball up and in you see that more and more hit by pitch up scouts teams organizations they're looking for velocity they're looking for spin but what comes with that you, you what comes with max effort pitching comes with lack of command and control it's kind of one of those necessary evils in baseball right now if you if you're wanting to get noticed on at the minor league level it's hard to be a guy like the Kyle Hendricks from the Cubs a guy that maneuvers the ball in out up down we talk so much about velo and spin rate but what comes with that is walks are up hit by pitch are up pitch totals are up we're seeing fewer and fewer starting pitchers able to go deep into that Sixth, seventh inning. You go back to that magical run by the Nationals. It's all about starting pitching, and when you get down to who wins the World Series 2019, nobody had starting pitching like the Nationals did. Max Scherzer was terrific. Patrick Corbin went back, not only starting, but out of the bullpen. Steven Strasburg was magnificent. It starts and stops with starting pitching, and the Nats over the years have been blessed with some great starting pitching. There's Hernandez doing damage against Southpaws this year, 10 for 17. And he's the early front runner for that trophy you want, that you two player of the game. It's a ball and a strike. He's had a career high, three RBIs. Homered in the second off a hanging slider, and then a base hit scored two in the third. And that is to third. They'll get one and the turn to second for an easy two. So after hitting Juan Soto with his first pitch, Kirby Sneed was able to corral things. Josh Bell flies out. And then let's start up the 5 4 3 Blue Jays double play. We'll see if they can continue their comeback quest in the top of the sixth. There's always so much excitement and anticipation prior to game one, and for great reason. Two out and nobody on. Here's Ryan Zimmerman, longest tenured national. Here's the wide of the pitch. Swing and a drive hit well. Deep center field. Way back goes Springer to the warning track, looking up, and it is gone. Goodbye. So we go to the fourth inning. The Nationals trailing two to one. It'll be Juan Soto facing Garrett Cole. The 1-0. 
Swing a fly ball, well hit to left field. It's going, going, and long gone up onto the railroad tracks. 20 years old and just bursting with power. And the Astros are down to their final out. Into left center field, Robles is there. And the Washington Nationals have stolen game one on the road. The Nats, if they can win three of their next six games, will win the World Series. Everybody getting in on the act tonight. 12 to 2, Washington. Well, the Nationals have certainly come to Houston and flexed their muscles. And that's the ball game. A blowout win here tonight in game two. Hey, listen to MLB's podcast to hear the latest analysis from insiders across the league and exclusive in-depth interviews with baseball's biggest stars. Subscribe now at MLB.com slash podcasts. Big day for the Nats and Teddy. Which team outside the postseason picture has the best chance to make the playoffs? We're bringing our next YouTube poll question. Blue Jays, Phillies, Mets, Yankees none of these teams are in a playoff spot if the regular season ends today but it's only mid August so who's getting in Dan please I know you don't want to hear this Blue Jays fans but I think the Yankees best baseball they haven't played it yet Anthony Rizzo Joey Gallo huge acquisitions the issue with the Yankees right now that bullpen that's locked down isn't so much anymore a role this Chapman on the I.L. Zach Britton has been ineffective. Tell you, a guy that's so underlooked and underappreciated, Loisaga coming out of the bullpen for the Yankees. Might be the unsung hero of this team. They've been great since the All Star break. Loisaga has been the anchor in that bullpen. Andres Machado out of the pen for the Nats tonight. And he's working against Randall Gritchick. Let's check out the postseason picture. And you're right about the Yanks. They won game one of the double dip. And they're currently on top of the Red Sox 2 0 thanks to their rookie, Luis Heal. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning, and that's a seven inning affair, so it's done soon against Boston. There's your picture. Yankees making a strong push right now. That AL East is absolutely stacked. The Tampa Bay Rays have a decent lead, but go all the way to the right side of your screen. Red Sox, Yankees, Blue Jays, all very much in the mix right now for a wild card. I think the concern with the Blue Jays would have to be this. Uh, this was a game, uh, even though it's just a two game set, the Nationals had been reeling the last couple of weeks. Very favorable matchup on paper with Manoa. You could make a case. One of their better starting pitchers had been throwing the ball really well, coming off a big outing against the Angels. And Charlie Montoya having to look over that scorecard with the National League double switching and hitting for the pitcher. Just hope that the Blue Jays aren't running out of schedule. They play another game tomorrow here in D.C. Then head home for three with the Tigers over the weekend. Florida for Soto. Gritchick is gone. Here comes Espinal. Okay. National League side. A lot to be decided as well. Now this is wild crazy, and wacky. Right? Yeah. This is wild and wacky. You take a look at that wild card. That's what jumps out to me. The San Diego Padres. Fernando Tatis playing in right field now, but the Reds talking about a team that can mash. They're like the NL version of the Blue Jays. Joey Votto has been having a resurgence. He's an MVP candidate. Oh, without point. a doubt. One of the negatives, though, Jesse Winker went on the 10 day IL with a little intercostal strain, but boy, I'll tell you what they can hit. They can get Sonny Gray and Castillo to throw up to their capabilities. They're going to be pressing the Padres all the way. I even see the Cardinals as having a shot at making a little run now just based on a soft spot in their schedule. They're only four games out. Only four games out. Getting back to the Padres too. This is how desperate they are. Jake Arrieta had been miserable for the Cubs. They signed him. The Cubs designated Arietta for assignment last week with you Darvish going on the I.L. The Padres looking for any kind of healthy body. Espinal past the left side. He's picking up a one out single for Toronto. A lot of people are wondering why in the world would the Padres take a flyer on a guy with an ERA north of six. You know Jake Arrieta isn't the same pitcher he was 2015 2016 but experience maybe you could 
find lightning in a bottle. And props to the Giants, too, who oh. continue to lead the National League West. Next week, we're in Houston for the Royals and Astros, but the week after that, we have the Brewers and the Giants, two division leaders right here on YouTube. It's going to be awesome. Those are two, I would say, surprise teams for all the work and the winning that they've done so far this season. But San Francisco is, what, the surprise of baseball this year? Yeah, they, they hit home runs like nobody else in baseball. Their starting pitching, Kevin, Ga Kevin Gaussman, has been terrific. And, oh, close call just on the fan side of the netting. Carter Keyboom gave it a good look off the bat of Reese McGuire. Here it is again. You see Keyboom, he gets all the way as far as he can get to the tarp. This one just on the other side of that netting. No chance. <laughs> Not unless he has about a 45 foot vertical that he can get <laughs> get over that net. Maybe like a scissor really quick to just cut a hole and put the glove through. That one got away from Machado. How about the Brewers too? Willie Adamas since he's put on a Brewer uniform said he had some troubles seeing the ball at the drop with the backdrop the batter's eye. Boy, he wasn't kidding as he meant to Milwaukee, the team that had a very difficult type scoring runs. Just think about where the Brewers are, and they've had little productivity out of their former NL MVP and Christian Yelich. But boy, can they pitch. They run three starting pitchers out there in Woodruff, Burns, and Freddie Peralta that are as good as anybody in the business. Josh Hader closing things out in the back part of that bullpen. Devin Williams has kind of resurfaced. Came back off the injured list, throwing the ball great, terrific changeup. Brewers have kind of blown that NL Central wide open. Seven and a half up on a hot Reds team. 72 wins this season already for Milwaukee. And McGuire strikes out. Some high cheese from Machado. Two gone. Pretty good pitch, 95 mile hour fastball up in the zone. You sit at home and you wonder why are guys chasing this pitch? This is the pitch that high strike is called. It looks so inviting to hit. You can see that carry on that Ford Seamer. Up and in, just ties up McGuire. Machado's been pitching well this year. ERA now under three on the season for the 28 year old. Average is about 95 with the fastball, which we just saw. And we saw him on Sunday against Atlanta and gave the team a scoreless inning with a strikeout on 10 pitches. Very competitive game and a loss to the Braves. On Sunday for the Nats, they were swept by Atlanta. Look at that shot, too, man. I am all about the Megalodon camera. Yeah, that that kind of that portrait kind of look, right? It's a cool look. Machado getting a little meeting from the pitching coach, going over the scouting report. Guriel coming in to pinch hit. Watch exclusive content on the Washington Nationals YouTube channel. Head to YouTube.com/nationals and follow the Nats today. Here he comes. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Brother of Yuli, who's playing for the Astros this year and also scorching the baseball. Up and down season for little bro. I'm excited to see this next guy for the Nationals, Mason Thompson, another trade pickup. He was acquired in the Daniel Hudson deal, and his fastball can really burst. It's one of the first few pitches there. Machado tried to overthrow that one, kind of yanked it out of the strike zone. 96 miles an hour. RBIs in five straight games for Lourdes Gurriel Jr. He could use another right now, but instead it's a weekly ground hit ground ball to third, and Carter Keyboom on the run will make the play and head right back to the dugout. Andres Machado strands a runner, and the Nationals preserve their five-run lead mid-six. This is the 115th World Series, and for just the third time in the history of the Fall Classic, the road team has won each of the first five games. Tonight, it's the Nationals trying to force a game seven tomorrow night.
Swings and hits one to deep right. Down the line. Going. Going. Good. Goodbye. Bang. Zoom goes Eaton. It's the Nationals two and the Astros two. So now Juan Soto. Soto swings and hits one high and deep to right. Going. Going. Into the top tank. A tremendous home run for Juan Soto. And a World Series Game 6 winning Curly W is in the books. They've stayed in the fight. Let's finish the fight tonight, Nats. That is a rocket to left, and the lead is cut in half. The batter was Howie Kendrick. And he hits it down the right field line. And it's gone! Howie Kendrick has done it again! What a stunner here in Game 7. The Nationals are a strike away from that franchise's first ever World Series championship. Swing and a miss! And a World Series Game 7 winning Curly W is in the box. Unbelievable! This is the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube, presented by Spotify. Nationals 8, Blue Jays 3, we're in D.C. Vladdy Jr.'s playing tonight, so is Juan Soto. Go behind the scenes with all your favorite All-Stars in exclusive content and more on the Blue Jays YouTube channel. Subscribe today at YouTube.com slash Blue Jays. There's an All-Star, Teoscar Hernandez, who lined up yet another home run tonight. He's homered in three in a row. And Ever since July 30th, this team has had an extra breath of fresh air, and it's Canadian air because they're back in Toronto. There were 670 days between games played up north, and they're the first team to play home games in three different cities in the same season. They were basically on the road up until a couple weeks ago, and that is the theme of the Jays in the second half of the season. We spoke to Charlie Montoyo earlier, Dan Plesak, and he continued to tell us how important it is for the team to be now back settled at home playing in front of their home crowd and Canadian baseball fans are fired up about it. I mean when you think about it this is a team that was almost two calendar years before they played at home at a beautiful ballpark. We're getting a look at Connor Overton second game they'll be into trying to get uh, keep it right here at eight to three beautiful ballpark the Rogers Center beautiful setting right the center of downtown Toronto. Just a wonderful place, a great city, a great sports town. Remember pitching, as a matter of fact, I was with the Milwaukee Brewers when the Brewers were still in the American League. I pitched in the first game, Scott, ever, and then it was called the Rogers Center, the Sky Dome. Espinal. With a throw that is brought in by Vladdy Jr. for the first out. Key boom down on a ground ball. There was no place like that. The big jumbotron in center field, the hotel out in the right center field area. It's really one of the hidden gems in a terrific city to play in. If you've never been to a ball game in Toronto, do yourself a favor and get up to Toronto. Just a beautiful city, beautiful ballpark. I think we, we know they like playing there too. The Rogers Center. They're nine and two, and they were about 500 in the other two ballparks. You know, they don't ever talk about it. You never hear Charlie Montoya talking about it being a disadvantage, but it really was playing their give their home games to start the year out in Dunedin. Listen, it is what it is. It's a grapefruit league spring training facility, then moving to Buffalo. They never felt like they had a home. A lot of teams traveled to Buffalo. The Yankees seemed like Yankee fans made the trek up to Buffalo. And they never felt like they had a home field advantage. Never used it as an excuse. But they're going to have to play some good baseball. Try to fight their way back into this one. They have one more against the Nationals tomorrow. Off day Thursday. Then they head home Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And to take on the vastly improved Detroit Tigers. There are some softer spots in the schedule coming up for the Blue Jays. I see a lot of twins. Good chunk of Orioles and Tigers looming for this team. So some opportunities to go on a run. And like the Jays have been saying, the biggest thing for them is playing at home as much as possible. The fans appreciate having them back. Here's the upcoming sketch. One more with the Nats. You see the Tigers, White Sox, more Tigers, Orioles. Oakland's a tough ball club to face. 
then you get even deeper into the season in September. They still have seven against Minnesota. Here's a shot. Last six games of the year for the Blue Jays are going to be at home at the Rogers Center. They play a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday against the Yankees, which will be a big series. And they have a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series to close the season out against the Baltimore Orioles. So if you're a Blue Jays fan, get a chance to root the Jays on at home the last six games, which I'm anticipating this AL East will be topsy turvy up until that last week. Same story with the wild card. There are four games out. The A's and the Red Sox holding those two seats at the moment, but the Yankees might be a half game out by the end of the night. Full boat to Garcia. And we'll do it again. Connor Overton making his second ever appearance. He debuted on Thursday against the Angels. And that is into right, backing up Hernandez right in front of the track for out number two. Up next, Riley Adams, who homered last time up, and Gerardo Parra is mic'd up today on YouTube. Your thoughts, Gerardo? Swing, bro. Perfect. Every team needs a Gerardo Para if possible. Baby Shark was all the rage in 2019 in this ballpark. Yeah, this I think was what has been so difficult for Nationals fans. What looked like six, seven weeks ago, they were about to make a run, put themselves in a spot to contend in the crazy National League East that nobody seems to want to win. Phillies have been in the lead, the Braves now in the lead. Mets getting some bad news. Doesn't look like Jacob DeGrom will be back anytime soon, but that guy right there, Parra, was such a big part of that world championship team in 2019, along with Steven Strasburg, Max Scherzer, Juan Soto. Look at Overton. That's a big inning. Three up, three down. Finishes it off with the strikeout of Adams. He straightens him up and sits down the side in order. Through six, it's 8 3. DC. Market regular season games live or on demand, plus MLB Big Inning exclusively on MLB.tv. Black hats and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. A lot of that from Mats fans so far tonight as their team leads it over a Blue Jays squad that's fighting for a postseason spot. And which team outside the picture has the best chance to make the playoffs? I think we could have guessed which way this poll was going to go. A little bit closer than anticipated though the Blue Jays fans coming in strong. 
I know a lot of people think this Blue Jays team can hit with anybody in baseball. Eric Fetty settled them down a little bit tonight. But a big six run third inning by the Nationals blew this one open. Alec Manoa short outing. First pitch swing and Marcus Semyon into Hernandez's glove. One gone in the seventh. Here comes Bo Bichette, who's been learning a lot from Marcus Semyon this season, Dan. He has, Scott. So I talked to Bo Bichette earlier on today. He told me, and it's easy to forget this, this is his first time going through a full 162 game season. So he's learning how to navigate it all, and he says he's leaning heavily on Marcus Simeon for advice along the way. That's with some physical components offensively and defensively. But he says maybe most importantly with the mental side of, ga of the game. Uh, Bichette telling me that Simeon's best tip to him is stay aggressive. He, he says that he feels most mistakes come when you're passive, when you don't hunt a pitch, or when you don't go get a ground ball. So he's focusing on just that, not getting too in his head or second guessing things, but staying aggressive, and he's leaning on his second baseman to give him some tips on that end. I love that. Bo Bichette is aggressive. He loves going after the first pitch pretty often. I mean, he knows what he's capable of doing. He can reach for a baseball that please act outside the strike zone and still do a ton of damage. You know, he has unique bat to ball skills. His father, Dante, was a terrific big league player, had tremendous power. Started off with the Angels, made his name though, really with the Colorado Rockies, the Blake Street Bombers, Dante Bichette, Andres Galarraga. Some really good Rockies teams. Carter Keyboom couldn't handle that one. Tough play on a tapper to third. Now, this is a tough play when you have a guy like Bichette who has so much power, you're playing deep, and that topper, that's one that's really do or die, and Bichette runs well. That's good for an infield knock. What he needed, he had a rough afternoon Sunday in Seattle. Bo Bichette, five ABs, five strikeouts, all swinging. Able to get back going tonight. Two for four nights so far for Bo. One for one night for Vladdy Jr. He's reached in all three trips. A couple base on balls. I look at the lineup and I go, oh, Bo Bichette. It must be nice. You're hitting behind Marcus Semyon in front of Vladdy Jr. But then I go, oh, Vladdy, you're hitting behind Bo Bichette and in front of Teoscar Hernandez, who's on fire right now. I think what you've seen right here is, is what has made Bo, uh, Vlad Jr. such a dynamic young hitter. Two breaking balls, not even close. Now he gets himself into a good count. It's on the ground. This should be two. There's one, and Vladdy's doubled up. Good pitch, two old slider from Machado. And Machado with a couple nice innings in relief for the Washington Nationals as they hold on to their 8 3 edge. Let's stretch on YouTube. Still got his buddy with him on his hat out in center field. You come to the ballpark and watch a baseball game, you never know what you're going to see, including a huge insect attacking Victor Robles in center field. If 
you were a big baseball fan in the 90s and early 2000s, you're watching the Blue Jays and you're going, wow, remember? Vladimir Guerrero, Dante Bichette, Craig Biggio, well, like father, like son, then, please, Zach. Vladimir Guerrero is a Hall of Famer. His son was with him everywhere when he was a kid, dreaming of these moments, and now he is living out those dreams, including an all-star game MVP. He put on such a show a couple of years ago in the Home Run Derby, and now he's one of the flat-out best hitters in this sport at such a young age. Yeah, two different kind of hitters. Pops was as good a bad ball hitter as ever played baseball. I think he and Kirby Puckett, Vlad Sr., could hit any, they believe they could get the barrel anything. This guy here that you're looking at, great strike zone recognition. That last that batter, pretty good breaking ball, 2-0 count from Machado. But Vlad Jr., terrific young player. A lot like Juan Soto, they know the strike zone, and very rarely they're going to have some games where they get a little impatient and chase out of the zone. But Vlad Jr., well on his way, being a several-time All-Star. Those are players that usually have excellent longevity in terms of their results on the field as long as they stay healthy. Here's the pinch hitter Andrew Stevenson two quick strikes against him from Overton who's back on the mound again. But I say that because the hit tool plus the plate discipline can really make things last for a long time. Actually we're seeing that with Joey Votto who's about to turn 38 years old. Listen, they're, they're, what are the keys to hitting and hitting well and hitting for average is swinging at strikes. I know it sounds very academic and routine, but it's really difficult in a game now where velocity plays up in the zone. That high strike is called. You're seeing more and more pitchers spinning the ball with breaking balls and sliders. But what, what all the good hitters do from Tony Gwynn to Barry Bonds, they swing at strikes. And the more strikes you swing at, the better chance you have to put the barrel to it. Still the Blue Jays heading down the stretch. Connor Overton, you're always looking for strike throwers, even though this game is a little bit one sided in favor of the Nationals. Ooh. Terrific off speed breaking ball right there, split changeup. That's his second K. Hey, the Blue Jays were aggressive at the trade deadline and really even before the trade deadline with the Simber pickup and Dickerson but you look at what they have for quite a while still a young core that includes Hernandez and Vladdy and Bichette and now George Springer signed up for a long time biggest free agent contract in franchise history and this is their winning window it's open right now it is and the rotation really is much better I think than people really appreciate Ryu is a top of the rotation guy. Barrios brings that to the Blue Jays. Manoa threw in a clunker tonight. Steven Matz was so good early on in the year. He's starting to get it back again. And Robbie Ray has had a resurgence in 2021. The window for the Blue Jays, I really think the AL East somehow, some way is going through the Blue Jays for the next few years. You would assume that Bichette and Vlad Jr. are going to continue to get better and better. This Just is so many good things going back home too, Dan. They acquired Jose Barrios on the 30th. Best winning percentage in the AL since the 30th belongs to mostly AL East clubs. No surprise there. Charlie Montoya after games will head to his drums and just let loose. True story. You know he's got drums in the clubhouse. And we said, oh, after wins, he goes, oh, sometimes after losses too, you know, just de-stress. They gave out a bobblehead once with him and his his drums. He's known for it. And he's a just a cool guy. Doesn't take anything too seriously. Tons of experience as a minor league manager, and he was a part of some very successful organizations like the Rays coaching staff for a while. He knows what he's doing. Pretty good 3 1 breaking ball right there from Overton. A lot of different ways to release stress. Charlie Montoya's version is to go ahead and hit the drums. That's right. It's true. I asked him about it. It was one of my first questions because I was following him quite a bit in his first season running the Jays. He said, I'm still doing it. I was ripped with foul off the bat of Victor Robles. One out base is empty. Robles. 
Showed flashes with the bat in 2019. Dan, 17 homers, 28 stolen bases. We've talked about how good he is on defense, but he hasn't taken that next step at the plate yet. Payoff. Popped it up. And that's for Hernandez. Second time that's happened, actually third time tonight for Robles. You know, getting back, talking to some Nationals people a couple of seasons ago, you know, they think that Robles, they thought at the time he had as much pop in his bat as Juan Soto. It hasn't transitioned into games when you watch him take some BP. We were here earlier for batting practice, and he has power to all fields. He's just yet to figure out how to control that once the game starts. Skill set is there. If and when he does find it, we're going to have two thirds of that outfield. They can cover a lot of ground. He and Soto in right field. Two outs, Alcides Escobar. And he's going to pop that one back. What's Soto doing? He's coaching Reese McGuire, telling him don't go for that baseball. <laughs> oh, he's a confident young man. That's one of the best parts about being at the ballpark here is to just keep your eyes on Juan Soto sometimes. Always up to something. Escobar this time in fair territory for Hernandez near the line. And that'll do it. So a nice clean bottom of the seventh from Connor Overton in pressing the big league staff right now. It's 8-3 Nats through seven. Ready, Springer ready. Springer ready. Homer his first time up. And now he might have done it again. How about another leadoff home run for George Springer, his 41st. Get out of here, ball. He's done it again on the first pitch. What a moment for George Springer. Side baseball's biggest blooper, and you can win your own error free fan experience. Fill out your MLB oops bracket presented by Mattress Firm at MLB.com slash bracket for your chance to win. Restrictions apply. See official rules. MLB Originals Season 2 is live on YouTube with new episodes every week. See your favorite players and learn more about the game you love on YouTube.com slash MLB. Leading off the eighth for the Blue Jays, their hottest hitter right now, Teoscar Hernandez, who homered for two in the fifth inning. And this is probably the hottest reliever coming out of the bullpen for the Nationals. His name is Mason Thompson. He was picked up in the Daniel Hudson trade with the San Diego Padres. This is a former third round pick in 2016. He's persevered through some injuries, but this is big time stuff. I actually saw his major league debut. I was in San Diego on the 22nd of June. And he went up against the Dodgers, tons of family there. Had a big emotional moment with his father after the game, seeing him for the first time. And that's the pitch to focus on. It's 97, it's the two seamer, and it's pretty much all he's been using. Well, he was ranked the ninth best prospect in the Padres organization, according to MLB Pipeline. So he was a guy that the Padres thought had a bright future. The Nats acquired him in a deal for Daniel Hudson. 
Remember Daniel Hudson. The last out of the 2019 World Series. What a World Series that was. Road team won every game in that 2019 World Series. First time ever. Two balls and a strike to Teoscar Hernandez. He's a tough out right now. Yeah, he's a big out. He's a guy you have to really be careful with the ball up in the zone. This is from earlier. This is a hanging breaking ball from Fetty. Compliments a StatCast Google Cloud. 108 exit velo. Projected distance 410 feet and on top of it, he gets to put on that nifty sport coat. I love the trajectory of that one. It was fun to call it live. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. Some serious launch angle on that one. From Teoscar Hernandez, number 21 on the season, and more hard contact producing yet another hit. Hernandez is on again. By the way, the home run had a launch angle of 36 degrees, and that's an impressive mark. And here's another hard hit baseball off the bat of their cleanup hit. Yeah, one of the things Mason Thompson is going to have to do is start to mix in a little bit of off speed. This Blue Jays team, good fastball hitting team. I understand it though with a five run lead, last thing you want to do is dance around the strike zone if you're Mason Thompson, but be aggressive. You want to try to keep the Blue Jays limit the damage here. This is a team that can strike and strike quickly. 23 year old Mason Thompson, limited work, but it's been really good so far in the major leagues. Now Dickerson watches the first pitch upstairs. Now there's a story to the heavy sinker usage so far for Mason Thompson that Dave Martinez told us earlier today he said when Thompson first arrived the Nats staff loved his fastball so much and they want him to really hone in on that pitch and make sure it's competitive that they said just use that nothing else we don't want to see the slider right now now he's going to start to implement that into his game but it's such a special pitch with so much potential. They want him to be able to use that with confidence and deliver it in all four quadrants of the zone as well. It moves a ton. I think you have to be careful if you have a team like the Blue Jays, they can hit the ball out of the ballpark. It's a team that can strike and strike quickly. You start going up there if you're the Blue Jays and you're only looking for number one, no matter if the movement is there or not. As you touched on Scott, he's going to have to move that ball in, out, up, and down. Velocity is not that difficult for guys to hit. They're so used to hitting velo. Tall pitchers on the mounds in honor of Dan Plesak tonight. Big Alec Manoa, 6'6 ish. Thompson, 6'7. And that's ball four. Dickerson is on. Hernandez to second. And this could be a troublesome inning. The Blue Jays looking to do some damage and play catch up here in the eighth. Dan Colco, what else do you have? Yeah, Scott, you guys talking about Mason Thompson needing to use all four quadrants of the strike zone with such a heavy fastball usage. The Nationals had another successful late inning reliever here in D.C. in recent years, Sean Doolittle, who throw through a very high percentage of fastballs. And he told me once that he didn't view that as one pitch. He viewed it as four pitches if he could locate that fastball to all four quadrants of the zone. It could be that effective that he could throw it 90, 95 percent of the time because he was changing eye levels and high ball hitters he would attack them high in the zone with it he would attack them low in the zone in out and the Nationals as you guys are talking about doing the same type of approach with Mason Thompson and Dan I mean you were very successful for a long time at the major league level I would imagine you know changing eye levels even if it's to a high ball hitter you got to attack him upstairs sometimes right no question about it Dan and that's what it's all about it's about disrupting timing and making comfort hitters feel uncomfortable. You see a lot of movement on the pitches so far from Thompson. But what happens with a lot of young pitchers? Listen, 10 games, he's just getting started in his big league career. Every experience, every trip to the mound is a different experience. 
what you feel comfortable with. Might not be a bad idea to start mixing in a couple of breaking balls. There we go. Nope. E even though that that pitch it's it's down and away. If you're the Blue Jay hitters you're going up there right now you're totally forgetting about anything that's off speed. You're up there geared for number one and the more pitches that you see. The ball one ball two. The more you see the more you like the more you get the time. One out of Grichik. No. That's two and oh. Upstairs. Now it's when you paint yourself in a corner and you kind of understand why now it's different levels at the big leagues. It makes it so difficult to pitch. It's hard just you keep pumping fastball one after another. Especially if the strike zone starts to dance around on you a little bit as it is right here for Mason. Every pitcher likes to have that one place that your happy zone that you can go to that you feel you can close your eyes and throw yourself a strike at any time. You know he has so much movement that that the ball is moving and darting all over the place. But it's so nice to have one spot to know hey I need to throw a strike where is it down and away or down and in and I can get that ball there. He's having a difficult time now trying to get that ball over that white plate. Three and oh missed again. Bags full of Blue Jays in the eighth. A hit and two walks to start the inning. Kyle Finnegan's been a high leverage guy out of the bullpen for the Nats since the trade deadline. Here comes Dave Martinez. That'll do it for Mason Thompson. This is turning in to be a very very high potential inning for not only some offense from the Blue Jays in the eighth but then also to be able to flip the lineup card eventually and get back to the top of the order at least for the ninth like we've been saying all night eight three against Toronto with six outs to spare it's not over. There is no doubt that if you've come to a game this summer, you've noticed some of the changes in the neighborhood. I'm talking new businesses, new restaurants, new places to hang out. I had to ask some of our neighbors to show me around. I'm now here with Daryl, who has lived here since 2006, and I just have to hear it from you. What has the transformation been like since you've moved here to now? We have seen this area grow from a few buildings, the hotel, our building, Capitol Hill Tower, and nothing else. And once the game started, I mean, we, we saw such a big difference in this neighborhood. They branded our neighborhood in a region of 6.5 million people. It brought people by metro and showed them how they could get to our neighborhood on the Green Line. It introduced people to the river. And oh, by the way, it brought National League Baseball here in a permanent basis, and people could come 81 times a year. In a way, the Nationals of the neighborhood have evolved together. When we both arrived here 15 years ago, the neighborhood was kind of fledgling, trying to identify itself, and so was the team. A few years later, we were a contender, so was the neighborhood. And 15 years later, uh, the Nats are a first-class club, and the neighborhood is a first-class place. Drama in the eighth of this MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Spotify, the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan Experience. Watch all new episodes free only on Spotify. Scott Braun, the three-time All-Star, Dan Plesak, and Dan Kolko live with you from Nationals Park. And Google Cloud is helping to power StatCast with massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights, taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology of Major League Baseball. Three hitters so far in the eighth for the Blue Jays. Hernandez hit, Dickerson walk, Grichik walk, and a chance to go over as we check out the odds courtesy of FanDuel. You were big on going over that five and a half number, Dan Plesak, and you just got to stick with this and team. I, and I'm staying bullish so far. The Blue Jays 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. But right now, sitting in a good spot, base is loaded. If you're the Nationals right now, this is a guy you want in. He's probably been their most reliable guy coming out of the bullpen, Kyle Finnegan. See that ERA 3.11. K's the walks. Walks a little bit high. 
heavy sinker usage about 70 percent of the pitches that he throws are sinkers and that defense playing it normal they would trade a run for a ground ball double play right here Jays on the pond Santiago Espinal first pitch missing wide it's one of the things you're Dave Martinez you're trying to manage a game and win but you're also trying to give your young pitchers an idea of what life is like in the big leagues I know the fans getting a little restless Mason Thompson having some difficulty throwing strikes but when you're trying to mix your younger players in your younger pitchers give them a chance to be out there when it's on the line every once in a while you have to make a tough call you have to bring in fitting in with the bases loaded nobody out this has been their guy Finnegan picking up three saves in six opportunities look at Espinal. I mean very small sample size but three for four with the bases loaded a couple doubles. It'll be a learning experience for Mason Thompson. I think the fastball plays but he's going to have to get to a spot Scott where there's a place that he can go that's safe that he knows he can with his eyes closed down and away whether it's down and away down and in and throw a strike. His stuff is so good. Gets a lot of movement. Terrific pitch there by Finnegan. Thompson will get better. The velocity is there. The movement is there. It's just the accuracy, which will come in time. But coming out of the bullpen, two things that kill you pitching out of the bullpen are walks and home runs. This has been a kind of a self inflicted rally for the Blue Jays right here. Base hit and a couple of walks. They're loaded with nobody out. Give him an inch. This team will take a mile. Espinal on the ground. Oh, that should be two to trade the run for a double play. No, Espinal saving first. In comes Hernandez to make it an 8 4 game, and they just get the fielder's choice at second base to put runners on the corners with just one down in the eight. A terrific hustle there by Espinal. Really, really good. Great job, too, by Finnegan. Your infield is playing back. You see that ball hit the. Tried to turn that double play. Good pitch. Garcia with a good feed and a strong throw, but Espinal clearly beats it. Beats it by, I would say, about a half a step. See the emphatic safe call. Good hustle. Wins the race and gives the Blue Jays two outs to play with here in the eighth. As we creep closer to the top of the order and Four of the better hitters in the sport coming up after McGuire and a pinch hitter. How about this? Talk about right out of the box. You can see the plays right in front of him. And Espinal beats this one. That's a big play. Keep the rally going. A double play if you were Finnegan, that would have been just what the doctor ordered. You you trade a run for a couple of outs. Blue Jays still back in business right here. Ball in the gap, ball down the line. All of a sudden, the Jays are right back in this thing. You can see why Dave Martinez likes high leverage spots going to Finney. He's not afraid to throw strikes, and that's one of the things you have to do coming in on the bullpen. It's not easy when you come in with the bases loaded and nobody out. There's some anxiety that's filled with pitching into that spot. You're trying to get the ground ball double play. A lot of times you're like, oh, just go ahead and get the ground ball. It's not that easy. You, you don't have control of it once it leaves your hand. McGuire spits one on the ground, and it's bobbled by Garcia. It gets past him and brings in another run. Dickerson will score. McGuire reaches on the E4. And the inning continues with just one out in the eighth. It's 8 5. Boy, you know what? He made such a nice play early on in the game on that ground ball. That bullet that was deflected at line drive. This is a play right here. Take a look at this, Scott. You can see he's already thinking about making that throw to second base. Position his feet. Watch his face or his eyes right here. He takes it off. He's already committed to making that play at second base. One of the things you want to do right here is you want to make sure that you get one out understand what he's trying to do but fundamentally that's a play you have to at least get one out now just a three run game one out in the seventh after the E4 scores Dickerson 
McGuire's at first. Espinal moves over to third. Alejandro Kirk is about to bat and then look behind him for the gauntlet, which yeah, begins yeah. with Semi. Yeah, this is what you talked about early on. You talk about that danger lurking. Well, guess what? It's lurking on the on deck circle. You have Simeon, Bichette, and Guerrero lurking. It's why the Blue Jays are so explosive. They turn that lineup over. It's not a day at the beach if you're Finnegan. He's done a great job, gotten a couple of ground balls. Espinal simply outran one to be able to beat out, to stay out of that double play, but a ground ball there that at least to get one out. Catcher Alejandro Kirk is a pinch hitter tonight. He has excellent bat to ball skills. Finnegan starts him off with a breaking ball. Right now, if you're the Blue Jays, anything other than that ground ball double play, if he can get the ball up in the air, to get that run in from third, get it to eight to six. Our YouTube creators are loving it right now in the live game commentary. The fumble. Says this game is very spicy. Sports storm going. This is getting interesting. We're with you. Kirk with runners on the corners up the middle base hit. That's another one for the Blue Jays. It's 8 6. Well, here they come. This is what the Blue Jays do. They can beat up on you and beat up on you in a hurry. This one looked over after about the third inning when it was 8 to 1. Fastball bullet hit right back up the middle. Not a particularly good pitch from Finnegan, who's made some really good pitches this inning. Unfortunately, his defense has let him down. This is the bullet right back up the middle. Jays in business, down two, first and second, one out. And that top of that order rolling things over. Here they come. A run of four All Stars in the lineup on the way for Toronto. They know how much this game means to the Blue Jays. First of all, this would be an epic rally back if they're able to complete it. They were down 8-1. Also, let's be real. Some teams down by seven runs, you're going, okay, I might flip to another ball game. Not when you're watching the Blue Jays this season. Another thing to go unnoticed, two really solid innings out of the bullpen from Connor Overton. Six up, six down. Kept the Nationals at bay. Kept this thing within striking distance to allow the Blue Jays to get back into this Trust me, this is something Charlie Montoya is going to put in the back of his mind. You may start seeing Overton in some more high leverage spots. Big key six up, six down. Two hits, two walks, an error in the inning so far in the eighth, and three runs for the Blue Jays. Semyon in the air. And Soto's trotting in. It's not going to do much. Two gone in the eighth. Well, if the Nationals end up hanging on to win no one, that might be the biggest out of the game right there. First and second, Overton makes a good pitch. Gets Simeon to pop this one up to shallow right field. Slider kind of middle of the plate. Had a little bit of late movement. Just enough to get Simeon out front to pop that one up to right field. Bravik Valera is going to pinch run. He's in for Kirk. McGuire's at second. Bo Bichette represents the go ahead run. He was swinging big on that first pitch. Pretty good fastball, 296, four seamer up in the zone. Pretty good night so far for Bo Bichette, two for four. Stolen base and a run scored. Sneaky 20 bombs on the year. 77 runs batted in to go with it. Long pause for Finnegan. Here we go. Pretty nice block there too by Riley Adams. That ball gets away. Blue Jays have two runners in scoring position. You see this right here. Kind of a nice backhand stop. That ball gets through the wickets, through the five hole. 
starts to get real dicey. Big time matchup for Finnegan with Vladdy on deck. 1 1. That's a called strike. Bo is not feeling it. Yeah, that might have been a little bit on the outside part of the strike zone. You see Bo Bichette a little bit disappointed. What do those swing pitches do? It's a big difference. The ball looks like it's a couple of inches off the plate. Instead of being 2 and 1, it's 1 and 2. Now you can expand the plate a little bit if you're Finnegan. A little framing 101 there. By Riley Adams behind the dish. All right to second for Garcia, and he's going to go to first. Thought about a little underhand toss to second or even going there himself. That could have been a world of trouble to keep the inning going. Instead, the Nats do finally escape, but. The Blue Jays are inching closer. Vladdy Jr. is going to lead off in the top of the ninth inning. First a chance for the Nats to add a little insurance, but this is a ball game, as expected. Don't count out the Blue Jays. 8-6. I want to talk to you about your Nationals debut. You had made a couple appearances for the Dodgers, one relief appearance, one start. But then this organization goes out and they acquire you in a absolute monster deal for a future Hall of Famer and for another all-star. Uh, you come to an organization that, that obviously clearly loves what you bring to the table. And then you go out a couple days after you were, you were acquired and you're on the mound in their home ballpark with their fans supporting you. Take me through that that Nationals debut day and what the specific memories that you think will resonate with you for years to come. Yeah, that was awesome. Honestly, uh, the jitters weren't too crazy. Uh, you know, I kind of just felt comfortable. I felt confident in what I was doing, as I always am. But uh, yeah, I got out there on the mound and uh, from pitch one to pitch 70, and I felt great. And I, I would say the moments that, that stand with me are going to stand with me for a while or you know coming off the mound after that first inning sort of getting like a light standing ovation kind of I guess you could call it uh but obviously seeing uh one of my former coaches in the stands you know right over the dugout and everyone you know rooting for me that was awesome Boom. This game has tightened up. Juan Soto will lead off in the home eighth for the Nationals. Now leading by just a pair of runs. And after jumping ahead eight to one earlier in this game, we entered the fifth with that score. Five runs since from Toronto. And now the Blue Jays bullpen will try and keep this thing close. Taylor Saucedo is in the game. Blue Jays bullpen has been awesome. Four total innings. We did see Thornton come in in relief of Alec Manoa and give up a home run to the first batter that he faced. But since then, they faced 12 batters, just one runner on a hit by pitch, which was wiped out by a double play, and some excellent performances from Sneed and Overton. Now Saucedo's turn. Yeah, Kyle Overton was awfully impressive. Six up, six down, gave the Blue Jays a chance to stay close. They were able to come through with three runs there in the top of the eighth, but it doesn't get any easier. Juan Soto was hit. Remember his last that bat he was hit with a fastball up and in. You could see that smirk like here we go again. Not another one. Nats would like to add on. They've got the big meat part of the order. Soto, Bell, and Hernandez coming up. And Soto connects solidly into the gap in right center. And he's heading for two easily. Stand up double to lead off this home eighth for the Nationals. You know, there's so many good young left handed hitters in the game of baseball, but you're looking at the best of the bunch right here. Juan Soto. You know, we were here earlier for batting practice, and I just marveled watching. It was kind of an old school way approach. He didn't hit one ball from second base to right field, just thinking up the middle, up the middle. And that swing right there was a swing he was working on at 4 30 in the afternoon. There's a method to the madness. Controls the strike zone better than any left-handed hitter in the game. Power to all fields. 
very rarely expands the strike zone. Special player. He's the best left handed hitter in baseball right now. There he is. You're looking at him. 116 miles an hour off the bat. The exit velocity for Juan Soto. This guy's hitting the baseball harder than ever this year, too. It's Josh Bell, who hasn't been as dynamite as his All Star 2019 season, but we are seeing a career high hard hit rate, which is the percentage of batted balls at 95 plus off the bat. So the Nats have liked a lot of what they're looking at so far from Josh Bell in the last couple months. You know, go back to batting practice this afternoon, Scott. You often hear scouts and baseball people talk about the sound is just different. Juan Soto at 3:30, 4 o'clock this afternoon, just watching him hit line drive after line drive, hitting a lot of ground ball one hop line drives to that shortstop position. And it just sounded like he was hitting it with a telephone pole. There's just a different sound when the ball comes off of his bat. Watching one round of batting practice, he must have hit out of five or six swings. Four line drives off the left center field wall that work like 15 20 feet off the air there. He is just a tremendous hitter that works at his craft and you can see why when you watch batting practice he's as good as he is. That's why he's always smiling. Big cut and a miss from Bell and that'll give an extra base to Soto. This would be a big run for the Nats now. A man on third. A little two seam uh, sinker right here. Right off the tip of the glove. Late movement. You know, defense right now for the Blue Jays. Runs are at a premium. Have the infield in. There's a good look at it there. Down two runs, you can ill afford really to give up another. Anything hit on the ground. It'll be interesting to see with the speed of Soto if they're going on contact. It's hard to do when you have the infield in like this. You have to really be a good base runner as far as being able to read an angle where the ball's at hit on the ground. It is on the ground to the drawn in infields, and the play is made for out number one. One of the keys to that is you have to have a pitcher if you're going to bring the infield in. You have to keep the ball down in the zone. Your infielders, their range is so limited the closer that you have them in. You really don't do yourself much of a service if you're going to pitch up in the zone. With the infield in, you're playing for the ground ball. A terrific pitch there. Big first down picked up by Saucedo. This is also a handles is coming Scott, up. what makes it so difficult now with that three batter minimum. So you start the inning off with a double. You get through a right hander. And now you're going to have to be forced to have a lefty. The Blue Jays have right hander up in the bullpen. You're almost if you're Charlie Montoya right here. You know a walk wouldn't be the worst thing in the world where you could get a ma matchup that's favorable. If Hernandez drives in another run, he's a lock for me for YouTube player of the game. And that last play was made by Valera, who's in at second. Simeon shifts over to shortstop. Bichette is done for the day. Can handle the position. Don't worry. Marcus Semien, a regular shortstop for years with Oakland, and he improved at the position dramatically over his time there. Working early on at one point with Ron Washington quite a bit. Right now, if you're Lane Thomas, what you want to try to do is get a ball up in the zone. So Cedar trying with the infield in, trying to get that ground ball. A lot of different ways to get a runner in. We talk about putting the ball in play, putting the pressure. Favorable count here, two and one. Looking for something, preferably he can get up in the air. 
Now three and one to Thomas who just debuted with the ball club on Sunday. Yeah, Hernandez is done. We're up here in the sky in the press box, but Hernandez replaced here. Lane Thomas with a chance to do something special in the five spot. You have to be really careful right here. Walk wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. You would still set up a double play. That was the pitch. A little anxious, first. right? Swung at ball four. I think you want to go back down in the zone right there for guys swinging 3 1. You'd have to think he's going to expand the strike zone. Just try to stay out of the middle of the plate. You've got a couple of bases open. And there's ball four. I think. Go ahead. It's yours. It's free. No charge. Lane Thomas will take first. He had a two hit day on Sunday in his debut at the ball club. His first two ABs were hits. Pass the baton to Carter Kibu. Interesting move right here. First and third. Looks like the Blue Jays are going to elect to pitch to Kibu. With the left hander Garcia on deck. Carter's one for two tonight. Single in the second, sack fly in the third. That was the big inning for the Nats. They poured on six runs against Alec Manoa and knocked him out of the game. First pitch change up there. Seeing if Keyboom would be overly aggressive swinging early in the count. This is a situation Dave Martinez and the Nats, they're really looking forward to seeing. What Key Boom can do is he going to be a middle part of the order guy going into the 2022 season. He's a former first round pick, 28th overall back in 2016. That high expectations for him. The concern was more on the glove side, and he's played a few positions at the major league level, but it's the bat that's been very slow to come around. It has, Scott. And up to this point, the Nats have been very patient. They've given him. Lots of ample opportunities to establish himself. There's a strike from Saucedo. Ball might have been a little bit in. 2 1 break ball, you can see by the reaction there. Keeboom didn't like that call. May have been like a ball off the plate on the inside, maybe a ball or two. That's a good take. <laughs> Another take. It's three and one. This is where you have to really be careful. Three one count. You just don't lay one in. This game's still in order for the Blue Jays. If you're Dave Martinez right now. I'm sure you're turning Keyboom loose here. If there's something up in the zone with a lefty on deck, you'd certainly like to give Keyboom a chance to go ahead and swing the bat here. He does and fouls it off. Another breaking ball on the inner third. Almost the same pitch that was called 2 0. That was a fat, that little cut fastball in. We've seen Salcido go to that changeup, that circle changeup, down and away, two seam fastball running away. Soto and Thomas are on for the Nationals. They haven't scored since the fourth. And another walk. Keep him on board. What's the plan? Well, the plan is you got left. You got a pinch hitter coming up here. It looks like Ryan Zimmerman, one of the original Nats. You're Charlie Montoya. You're gonna have to go out and get the lefty. Go to the right-hander in the bullpen. Ryan Zimmerman 
feasts on left handed pitching that's his specialty these days and he is Mr. National their first ever draft pick and he is the franchise leader in most of the major categories and we'll watch him work in a clutch spot when we come back on YouTube. For the first time in his young career, Alec Manoa will take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, this will be a challenge for Alec Manoa. This is a good Rays team. We'll be able to go out there and, and you know set the tone first day and kind of just keep that ball rolling for the rest of the weekend and uh, get a big series win. So I was just really hungry to get back out there. 2-2 pitch, breaking ball, swing and a miss. 0-2 pitch, let slider again. Out of Rosarena. Four strikeouts in a row for Manoa. He gave us exactly what I think what we all wanted or what we all needed. I mean, he was unbelievable. Six in a row set down on strikes by Alan Manoa. Wow, strikes out. That's 10 strikeouts for Manoa. Alan Manoa, seven innings in the book, shutting out the Tampa Bay Rays on just three hits and 10 strikeouts. Hey, hang out with us every week on YouTube. This is still what we have to work with for the rest of the season. Next week, we're in Houston for the Royals and Astros. Brewers, Giants, a battle of two first place ball clubs on the 2nd of September. Then we have the Mariners in Houston. A's and Angels, Otani time on the 17th of September. And we'll finish up our schedule with the Cardinals and the Brewers. Two, two teams in the NL Central. One that looks like a lock for the postseason. The Cardinals now making a late push as well. Tell your friends it's free, it's easy. YouTube.com slash MLB. Join us every single week right here, like you're doing right now. And this is an 8-6 game. Bases are loaded up for the Nats. Saucedo is replaced by Rafael Dolis as Charlie Montoyo opts for the right-handed pitcher against Ryan Zimmerman, which makes a ton of sense because Zim just eats up southpaws this, these days. Yeah, one of the things a little bit concerning, you see the 26 walks in 31 in the third innings for Delis, big arm, but at times has a difficult time throwing strikes, and you touched on it, Mr. All-Time National. Leads the Nets in just about every offensive category. His 281 home runs, a franchise record for the Expos slash Nationals. A few clutch hits for the franchise. 16 seasons elected not to play last year Scott in the COVID riddled 2020 season. He's 36 and he spits at the first pitch from Dolis. That's for up 8 1. It's 8 6 in the eighth. One of the things you have to be careful here if you're Dolis. This guy's one of the better fastball hitters. He's going to go up there hunting a fastball. Good high fastball hitter. Up out over the plate. See the Blue Jays have him shaded a little bit towards right center field. A big gap there down the line in the gap in left center field. Dolis delivers. Zimmerman watches ball two. A lot of movement on that fastball. Pretty good spot to be in right now if you're Dave Martinez. You have a veteran hitter up and Zimmerman. You've got a guy on the mound who at times has. Difficulties throwing strikes. The pitch probably is a 2 0 breaking ball, but it's a tough pitch. You certainly don't want to go 3 0. If you're Ryan Zimmerman right now, you're hunting a heater. If you get it, go ahead and turn it loose. He has six career grand slams. Here's the 2 0. He was going for seven. He was going for it right there. <laughs> the movement is what was able to tangle that swing and a miss. You can see this two seat fastball, you see the rotation. Zimmerman likes it up there. A little bit too high. That's about an armpit high. He likes it down around that belt thigh area. Okay. 
Soto started the eighth with a double. Bell bounced out. Lane Thomas walked. So did Carter Keyboom. One out, bags full. And that's up by two. 2-1 to Zimmerman. Make it 3-1. Yeah, that's kind of that split slider that he throws. It backed up on him. Tough spot to, if you're Charlie Montoya you bring in a reliever that has difficulty throwing in strikes and now you bring him into a bases loaded one out spot. Not an ideal situation but it is what it is. You're going to see one of those big swings again I think from Zim. There it is. Deep drive left field warning track. Not enough to bring home everyone, but it will score a key insurance run for the Nationals. Juan Soto scores and makes it 9-6 now. Zim does his job in a pinch hitting roll. That was of a fraction of an inch from being, I believe, that would have been the ninth career grand slam for Ryan Zimmerman. Just out in front of this one right here. Dolis falls behind in the count. There's a 3-1 fastball. Right down the middle, just off the end of the bat. Ryan knew it as soon as he hit it. Knew he drove the run in. It sounded good. It died and left. A little padding, though, for the Nats bullpen in the ninth. Lane Thomas also hustled his way from second to third. They're on the corners. For Riley Adams, who homered earlier tonight. And that's foul. Two hits tonight for Adams. Two young catchers for the Nats after years of Kurt Suzuki and Jan Gomes as an excellent veteran tandem. Adams splits time with Trace Barrera. Former Blue Jays prospects. He would love another. That's probably the best pitch that Delise has thrown right there. Good two seam fastball. 95 started out off the outer edge of the plate and drove that ball back into the strike zone. There's a look at Geraldo Parra on deck. He of the baby shark fame. The song still lives on, Dan. If the inning continues, I'll just be hush. We'll just lay out and let it breathe. Let it breathe for some kids' music. Adams fouls another one. That split slider again. You can see why Delise would have some difficulty with the strike zone, that fastball. Everything that he throws kind of runs into a righty, down and, a, down and away to a lefty. Doesn't really have anything to that breaks down and away. So if you're a right handed hitter you have a pretty good idea the ball is going to be coming in towards you. Oh quick check over to first. Going for the back pick. And Slatty says don't challenge it. Kibu made it in time. His idea from McGuire almost caught him. I think he might have had a chance if Vlad was a little bit closer to the bag. He was playing up a little bit. Caught that ball. He was about a couple of feet in front of home plate in front of first base. Adams to right and the Nats do add on. Lane Thomas is in. And now Keyboom being waved around. Some trouble in right field. The Nats get another run and break it back 
crack open. It's 11-6. What a night for Riley Adams, the catcher in the eighth spot. Boy, he's had some kind of a night. Third hit on the night. Takes a good fastball, doesn't try to pull it. Hits a bullet down that right field line, and once again, the underbelly of the Blue Jays has been that bullpen. They've been throwing the ball better the last week to 10 days, but it's come back to bite him again tonight. Here you see the pitch from Dolis. Two seam fastball away, and Riley does a great job, doesn't try to pull this. Shoots a bullet down that gap, down that right field line. See Keyboom being waved in. Couple of big insurance runs for the Curly W's. And that bounced in a good spot for the offense into the corner. Hernandez is able to grab it, but not before two more runs score for the Nats. A three run eighth and a five run lead. First career three hit performance from Riley Adams, and Parra swings and misses. Adams doing it against the team that traded him a few weeks ago. Hey, a big night. And one of the things the Nationals are looking forward to 2022 and beyond, where are they going to be? A lot of players auditioning for the future. Dave Martinez taking a look at the lineup card right there, seeing who he has left available. A big night for Riley Adams. Three for four. A solo bomb to go along with it. Pretty nifty slide there by Carter Keyboom. Gets that, where's that guard on the left hand and slides it right over the top of home plate. That's the vantage point if you're in the Nationals dugout too and you're cheering big. Your team's trying to wipe away a seven game losing skid. This would be a nice W for the Nats. Up against a very competitive American League East ball club in the Toronto Blue Jays coming to town for two. I'm sure the Blue Jays have tried so many different things to get Dolis going. Just so deliberate in between pitches, Scott. It, it, it just it's a hard time to build any kind of timing and rhythm. It just there's a lot of time in between. It, as you're playing behind a guy like this, you end up you get on the, the heels of your feet. He's dancing around the strike zone and, and spend so much time catching the ball, walking around, it, it kind of lulls you to sleep. And it's hard to to be a consistent strike thrower when you spend as much time between pitches as he does. Talk to any position player about that. They hate it. They want pace. They want to be on their toes. Next pitch coming through. Stay alert. And give the Nationals credit. They, they've made the Blue Jay relievers work and throw strikes. They've worked favorable counts. Riley Adams there took a pitch. He didn't try to do too much with it. Hits a bullet down the corner in right field. Some very good situational hitting tonight from the Nationals. I know they, listen, they've had a difficult time since the trade deadline. It's not easy when you have guys like Schwarber and Scherzer and Turner and you see the meat and potatoes of your team gone. But you know what? As Dave Martinez told us early on, they're, they're, they're looking for 2022 and beyond. And Mike Rizzo, their GM, the, the, this is a winning organization. The, they're all about winning. Then they're, Certainly thinking that 2022, they want to be back in contention. Yes, will be what they hope a quick reload. And you can look at the Toronto Blue Jays, 15 and 16, they were in the postseason and then kind of down for a few years, 17 to 19, as they loaded back up. But it wasn't this five, six year tear it all down like we've seen from some other clubs in the sport over the past decade, like. The Astros and the Cubs. Listen, when when you have a young pitcher, there's a guy going tomorrow, Josiah Gray, that they acquired in that trade with the Dodgers. Robles past third, and here comes another for the Nationals. Riley Adams will score and make it 12-6.
Well, this is the kind of game the Blue Jays saw much too often the first couple of months of the season. Bullpen kind of being their Achilles heel, and the Nats are pouring it on. Fortunately, in the National League, if you're Charlie Montoya, you're going to have to let Dolis work his way through this one here. You hate to have to empty out that bullpen with the game tomorrow. Fortunately, the Blue Jays have the day off on Thursday. They have the Tigers coming in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then after that, the White Sox come in. So, tough part of the schedule coming up for the Blue Jays. And this was an Alec Manoa's night. And then the Jays' bullpen did such a nice job of keeping them in the mix tonight up until this point. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Connor Overton. It was terrific. Six up, six down. Kept the Blue Jays in it, but the Nationals give the Nats hitters credit. They've made the Blue Jay relievers throw strikes. And when they've gotten in favorable counts, they've been able to put good wood on the ball. Big night from Riley Adams. A 27 minute inning. This right, the Hernandez had a big frame. night tonight. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to get your pick soon for you two player of the game. Dolis to Escobar on the ground, and it's Semyon going the short way to second. And finally, the Nats go down in the eighth, a 28 minute half inning, and the Nationals are able to pad their lead. And it's nice and comfy 12 6 after eight. Flatty Jr. leading off the ninth. For the first time in his young career, Alec Manoa will take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, this will be a challenge for Alec Manoa. This is a good Rays team. We'll be able to go out there and, and you know set the tone first day and kind of just keep that ball rolling for the rest of the weekend and uh, get a big series win. So I was just really hungry to get back out there. 2 2 pitch, breaking ball, swing and a miss. 0 2 pitch, let's slider and get. He strikes out of Rosarena. Four strikeouts in a row for Manoa. He gave us exactly what I think what we all wanted or what we all needed. I mean, he was unbelievable. Six in a row set down on strikes by Alan Manoa. Wow, strikes out. That's 10 strikeouts for Manoa. Alex Manoa, seven innings in the book. It's the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Spotify, the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan Experience. Watch all new episodes free only on Spotify. And the Nats had a big bottom of the eighth to make it a little more cushy for Glaive Kobasitz, who comes in to try and shut the door against Vladdy Jr., Teoscar Hernandez, and Corey Dickerson. Three, four, and five do up for the visiting Blue Jays. Hey, pretty cool pitch sequence here by Finnegan. Bo Bichette gets a fastball that he can drive up in the zone and then a ball down in the dirt. Pitch off the corner a couple of inches, then he gets a ball right here and he drives this ball right back up and a big out there by Finnegan. Pitched around some shady defense. Good night for Bo Bichette, though. Had that rough night Sunday afternoon in Seattle. Five at bats, five strikeouts. Came back tonight with a big two hit night. It's time. Tonight's YouTube player of the game is decided by you right now on your screen. Vote please. Yadiel Hernandez, Riley Adams, Alcides Escobar, and Eric Fetty are your options. And Dan Plesak, you get to kind of help sway the vote. If people want to hear what you have to say before they decide, they can do that. I'm going to go with a former Blue Jay that was expected a lot. I'm going to go with Riley Adams. He's had a big night, three hits. Solo home run in the fourth inning. 
And he's catching Glabe Kobasitz right now. The 26 year old keeping the theme alive of tall pitchers on a Tuesday for Dan Plesak. Yeah. Six foot seven on the mound. Yeah, right now if you're Dave Martinez you'd like to see him attack the strike zone. The six run lead pretty good breaking ball there one and oh. Gabe gets a ground ball and it's past the infield. Vladdy Jr. is on again. Not much you can do about that. You can control once it leaves your hand, but this is why he's such a good hitter. 95 mile an hour plus fastball. He beats it into the ground in a high chopper that gets through. That's why this guy hits over 300. There's more to his game than just hitting the ball over the fence. Great bat to ball skills. He actually only has one extra base hit in his last 13 games, but in the last few days he's getting on a ton with singles and walks. That's a strike to Teoscar Hernandez, who homered in the fifth. That outside corner has been stretched a little bit tonight. Pitcher's been able to take advantage. That ball, about a half a ball or ball up the plate, has been called a strike most of the night. How many buttons are off for Clovis sits right now? Did you ever sport that look, Dan? No, that was no. that was not my look, Scott. <laughs> I was I don't know what you'd say, a little bit more conservative, a little bit more buttoned up. Perfectly stated. Hernandez fouls it back. These are the kind of games if you're Dave Martinez, you're looking for strike throwers. It's going to be a remade, revamped bullpen. A lot of guys auditioning for roles in 2022. On the flip side tonight Kyle Overton was tremendous for the Blue Jays six up six down and if you're Dave Martinez you're always looking for those guys that you could depend on to throw strikes in the seventh eighth and ninth inning. We've seen the Blue Jays relievers struggle with strike zone command tonight. One sub Adrian Sanchez at second base taking Luis Garcia's spot. Sanchez the baseball player. Fundamentally sound. Hernandez stays alive. Back up breaking ball right there 87 miles an hour. Talked about it earlier, Scott. Two things that really can damage you coming out of the bullpen walks and home runs. And we saw that out of the Blue Jays bullpen. They made it easy for the Nats. Some free passes in that eighth inning, into the third inning. Made it a little bit easier. Get some favorable counts of the Nats. Give them credit. In the air to right for Soto, chasing and won't get to it. Scrape on the hand. See if Juan can find somebody to toss that ball up to. Yeah, there you go. Long way to go, and if you're Dave Martinez, you always cringe when you have a player like that going towards that foul line. They don't run into that wall over there and damage an ankle or a knee going into it, especially in a game like this, it's a little bit out of hand. The hand kind of helped as an emergency break. Before he got to the wall. This one's on the ground, a chance for two. Key boom over to Sanchez, hooking up with Bell. And they will retire both Guerrero and Hernandez. And the Nats are one out away from picking up a W tonight. You know, some good things happen when you pound the strike zone. A little unfortunate on that high chopper for Vlad for the base hit, but you continue to make good pitches. 5 4 3 double play and the Nats one out away from picking up a win over the Blue Jays. This would be a nice pick me up for Klobuchar. 
who had a wobbly appearance on Sunday against Atlanta. Some wild pitches, a walk, 33 total tosses in his one inning, gave up one earned run. Now facing Dickerson. You see a big, tall guy. Uh, lots of long leverage. Look at his legs and his arms. Gets good sinking action. Could be a little bit difficult for guys who are as big as him to command the strike zone. He had a long way coming down that mound, but he's really under control. That was a good fastball right down the middle. You know, if you watch him, one of the things you have to like, even though he's a big guy, Scott, he doesn't fall over towards first base. He stays pretty good directional, taking that chin and his chest towards home plate. Makes it a lot easier to command the strike zone. If you're Dave Martinez, you really have to like what you've seen. Even though this is a blowout game, the ninth inning is the ninth inning. A little unfortunate on that high chopper from Vlad to start the inning off, but he, he's continued to pound the strike zone. Nationals one strike away from winning game 51 on the year. Yeah, the Nats have lost 12 of 13 games. It's been a slide since all of those trades at the deadline. Yeah, and if you're the Blue Jays, there's a little bit of cause for concern. The Yankees swept both ends of a doubleheader from the Red Sox this afternoon. They won the opener 5 to 3. They win the nightcap 2 0. So if you're the Blue Jays, makes this game tomorrow night, Wednesday, very important. Jays have the day off on Thursday. Then they head home for a homestand where they host the Tigers and the White Sox. Yankees are picking up steam and they have a lot of players coming back. Garrett Cole was good last night coming off the IL. Nine strikeouts, throwing 98 to 100. Bullpen coming through. Yanks are getting together at the right time. There was a team that was in trouble before the break, but we touched on it earlier. Big trade acquisitions that bring in Anthony Rizzo and Jolie Gallo. It's turned that team around. 3 2. We'll get into that AL East and the wild card. Post game show coming up soon. Right here on YouTube, presented by Spotify. We'll chat with a couple players afterward as well. Some happy Nats. Unless Corey Dickerson has something left in him. 3 2. Jays down by six here in the ninth. On the ground, and this should do it. Game over. Nationals take it 12 6 in D.C. Big night for the newbie, Riley Adams. Behind the plate, and of course, at the dish, a single, a double, and a homer, and a good shot at taking home YouTube Player of the Game honors. Yadiel Hernandez with a pretty good chance as well. Nationals improved to 51 and 68 on the season. Jays dropped to 63 and 55. Ready for the post-game show? Let's do it. Dan called for it, and you get what you want on a Tuesday night. It's the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Post game show presented by Spotify. Three hours, 25 minutes, and a done deal as the Nationals top the Blue Jays by a final score of 12 6. Dave Martinez and his ball club picking up a win against a very strong Toronto Blue Jays club. Both squads had yesterday off. Blue Jays get into DC, and they drop the first of a little two game interleague affair. And we had some strong hitting performances tonight from the Nats lineup, showing up big with 12 runs this evening. Hey, for as much as we gushed over the Blue Jays starting nine, and rightfully so with all the All-Stars at the top of the order, Dan, I still see a Juan Soto in there. Josh Bell can do big things with the bat. Victor Robles has the potential. So does Carter Keeboom, for that matter. 
And then there's your YouTube player of the game. And Riley Adams had the night of his life so far in the big leagues. He did a big three hit night, including a solo home run. Here you get a look good look at it about eight rows deep. Big night for Riley Adams and a big night for the Nationals. It's a curly W in the books for the Nets. That's right. A three hit night, first time as a big leaguer, and he takes 58% of the vote. Trophy coming his way, name will be engraved on it, and he deserves it. You know, Scott, and I'm, I hope you're not blaming me for swaying the audience, but <laughs> to me, that was a no-brainer, a big night from Riley. Well, like I said, you tell us when the post-game show starts. You name the player of the game. The crowd agrees with you, and he joins us live right now on YouTube for our Spotify interview. The YouTube player of the game is Riley Adams, still with the catcher gear on. Riley, congratulations. Let's start with your work at the plate and the home run, the second of your big league career coming back in the fourth. Take us through that, A.B. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, uh, you know, facing a team that, you know, I was recently on, uh, I know a lot of these pitchers, and. Uh, and that at bat, uh, Thornton is throwing me a lot of breaking balls, and uh, I was able to work it to 3-2, and uh, he left the pitch a little bit up, and I didn't miss. So it uh, felt good, felt good, and it's just great to get a team win today. Hey, Riley, congrats on a big night. Could you hold that trophy up? It kind of looks good. We want to get a look at it on YouTube. Hey, you know what? You've had a chance. You know this Blue Jays. How difficult is it to get through and navigate through this Blue Jays lineup? Yeah, I mean, you guys see it. You see their numbers. Uh, it's a great team. They got great. They got great batters. They got a great lineup, and uh, it's challenging to navigate. So, uh, credit to our offense too. You know, we put up 12 runs, and uh, we, we we put up a good showing tonight. You're the big man this week for the Nationals because of what you just mentioned. You were just with this organization, so how much did it help you in your game planning at the plate? And also, how many conversations have you had with teammates going, "Hey, Riley, what's this guy like?" Yeah, no. Uh, there's uh, there, there's a lot. Obviously, I've been with this organization, or I've been with the Blue Jays organization for a while, so uh, I know know a lot about those guys. And I was just trying to help out our teammates, talk about what the pitchers got. Obviously, I've caught a lot of them over there, so uh, I was trying to just do as much as I can to help these guys, give them a look. Uh, you know, there's a lot of new relievers over there on that staff, so uh, just trying to let everybody know what what most of those guys got. Riley, a hot, muggy night like this, you're sweating like you've run a marathon. How difficult is it to sit there and catch a game like this? It is very humid out here tonight. Oh, yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a San Diego boy, so uh, anything that's uh, some humidity or anything, uh, I start sweating quite a bit. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely a sweaty night, but, uh, you know, it's always sweeter when you get the win. How about the home run? Did you know when he hit it, it was gone? Uh, I, I knew pretty pretty soon after it that uh, it had a pretty good chance of going out. So felt 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 good, felt good. And how's your approach been at the plate lately? Dave Martinez spoke to us before the game about the fact that you've been working on shorting up the swing a little bit, maybe pulling the baseball more. And it's funny he tells us that, and then look what happens tonight. Yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, just been just been constantly getting some work. Uh, you know, hitting guys over here. K Long has been been great. Uh, Obviously, talking with Davey, it's just trying to simplify everything, get the make the swing as short as possible, and uh, get the foot down. You can never get that foot down early enough. <laughs> you know what? We, we we marvel at Juan Soto. Do you since you've been over here with the Nationals? Isn't it amazing to watch what this guy does with a bat in his hand? Oh, absolutely. He's one of the best in the game for a reason. And uh, seeing the work he does behind the scenes in the cages, it's uh, it's really impressive to watch. And you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to learn as much information. There's a lot of great guys in that clubhouse, and uh, I'm still still learning a lot of people and getting getting used to these guys. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun it's fun watching them work. It's fun watching their their daily grind. And a guy like Juan Soto is special, uh, and I, I enjoy it a lot. Do you have the prize right now? Is it in your hands? Do I have what? There it is. The oh, prize. Right. There it is. This thing's heavy. Good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that means it's a good it's thing to have I'm on tired. your trophy case. I don't case. want to hold this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did a lot of work tonight. Uh, you two play the game trophy, though. We'll have your name engraved on it. Riley, congratulations on the W, the performance tonight, and good luck the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Go in and get a shower and get cleaned up, <laughs> big boy. I need one. I need one. I love it. Riley Adams with us on the postgame show presented by Spotify. Nats pick up a W. They double up the Blue Jays by a final score of 12-6. Abe would approve 10 hits per side. Much more to go on the postgame show, including highlights from this one. Yeah, right in that
guarantee you're in the spot. Send the mic and we'll shred it. That's some serious swag. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see that? Just make sure you return that Tupperware clean. Make sure you return that Tupperware clean. <laughs> Make sure you return the this this The secret to being an all-star? Grandma's cooking. <laughs> okay. Hot night in D.C. Same story for the Nationals. Bats this evening. They put up 12. How did it happen? We're here for you. This is the 33-year-old rookie from Cuba, one of the clubhouse favorites, Yadiel Hernandez. And he connects on the 0-2, drives it to deep right, and it is gone! Yadiel Hernandez muscles up on an 0-2 pitch to put the Nationals on the board first. Home run number five on the season. His manager says he has sneaky pop and he snuck one just over the wall. And the Blue Jays have tied things at one. Victor Robles was just hit by a pitch. That'll move up Riley Adams to second. Escobar coming up next. Escobar is going to find some open space and he comes through. Adams come on down. Robles come on down. That'll bring two in for the Nationals and make it 3-1 on the Escobar. Two RBI double. Alec Manoa laboring a bit now as the Nationals have seemed to crack the code so far. And it doesn't get here. any easier here. Yadiel Hernandez homered off Manoa. And he is swinging. It's on the ground. It's a tough play for Bichette. It gets past him. In comes Escobar. And Soto will score. And the throw to third is not in time. Bell is in there. It's a two RBI hit for Yadiel Hernandez. He's driven in three tonight to make it 5-1 Nationals. Good job by Josh Bell being aggressive to get from first to third and that's still in business. And that one sails away and that will score another run. Josh Bell will walk home and Hernandez goes first to third. Manoa unraveling in the third and now he's given up a career high six runs tonight. And it's 7-1 Washington. Trent Thornton is going to take over now for Alec Manoa. Riley Adams is one for one. Talking about big home runs. Riley Adams go long. He muscles up for a solo shot. It's 8-1 Washington, second of the season for Adams, who was picked up in the Brad Hand trade with the Blue Jays. Laddie walks for a second time tonight. He's reached base in all three plate appearances. Oscar Hernandez swinging on the first pitch, driving it deep to center. It's got a lot of lift to it, and it is gone. Teoscar continues to light up the baseball, and he makes it 8-3 on his 21st home run of the season. Third straight game with a homer for Hernandez. And the comeback was temporarily on, Dan. This Blue Jays team loaded up the bases. Brandon Finnegan comes in to try and save the day. First, it's Santiago Espinal bringing home another run on the ground ball, and this was good hustle. Yeah, he beats it out. This could have been a 6-4-3 double play. Beats it out by about a stride. Josh Bell tries to sell this one, the first base umpire, but they weren't biting. Finnegan, though, was able to get out of the inning here. A misplay by Garcia, and it looked like the Blue Jays were really back in business. Bullet back up the middle, and all of a sudden, it's 8-6. And here come the Bluebirds. Did you think they were coming back at that I did. point? I, I, I did, I really too. did, I did too. But this was really a good pitch. This was the biggest out of the game. Marcus Simeon on a 2-1 pitch, pops it up the right field. Bull Bichette hits a bullet for a force out right here. And that was really the pop-up of Simeon to me was the game. Yeah, it was a two-run game at that point. The Blue Jays wish they picked up another run or two, but then Rafael Dolis comes in and Ryan Zimmerman couldn't go the whole way with the bases loaded, but that was good enough to score Juan Soto on a sack fly, then Riley Adams really broke it open. Yeah, this was the one right here. This was the final nail in the coffin. 
He hits a bullet down the right field line, drives in two big runs, Carter Keeboom scoring, and that was about all she wrote for the Nats. Gabe Klobis hits in the ninth inning against Corey Dickerson. What do they call that W? How's it shaped? That's a curly W in the books. Win 51 for the Nats. 12-6 is your final score. Also, big props to Yadiel Hernandez, who had a huge performance as well. As we check out the Spotify game summary, Hernandez picking up his fifth home run of the year and of his career, and also his first home run off a non-fastball in his big league life. And Dan Colco chatted with him and his interpreter after the game. That's right, Scott. Caught up with Yadiel and Octavio Martinez. Yadiel Hernandez, two for three with a home run, three runs driven in. His batting average back up over 300. He's 33 years old. He waited a long time to make it to the major leagues, made it up last year as a 32-year-old. Now he's getting significant playing time as a 33-year-old. He waited a long time for this moment. I asked him after the game how it feels to not just get the playing time, but to deliver the way that he has as well. Yadi, you've been waiting a long time to get up here to the major leagues and to get consistent playing time. How satisfying is it to be performing the way that you are right now? Yadi, has esperado mucho tiempo en llegar aquí arriba a las Grandes Ligas, y no nomás eso, jugar constantemente todos los días. ¿Qué tan contento estás el hecho de que lo estás haciendo ahora? Oh, en realidad estoy bastante contento, ¿no? Eh, ya que se me ha dado la oportunidad eh, en estos últimos juegos. Eh, Es un sacrificio todo, todo lo que he pasado por, por las ligas menores. Eh, estoy muy contento que ahora tengo la oportunidad de estar jugando y que me estén saliendo las cosas bien. Eh, estoy agradecido por todo. No, I'm extremely happy the fact that I've gotten an opportunity these last few days to play every day. Uh, you know, it, it pays off all the sacrifices I've done and, and all the hard work I put in to finally see it and on the field. And I'm just ex excited about that. I'm very happy. It's been a tough stretch for your team, but you snap a seven game losing streak tonight. How have you noticed your ball club handle the last couple weeks and seeing a lot of guys go and some more losses than you guys have been accustomed to? Han sido un poco difícil las últimas uh, par de semanas, especialmente eh, el equipo perdiendo los juegos que han perdido. Uh, hoy acabaron con esa uh, serie de siete juegos seguidos perdidos. Uh, ¿Cómo crees que se siente el equipo, el hecho de ver los cambios, ver a sus compañeros que se fueron a otro lado y el ambiente que ha sido las últimas semanas? Creo, creo, que esta, creo que esta victoria es buena, ¿no? Porque eh, eh, esos juegos perdidos, obviamente el equipo está desanimado, ¿no? No había, no había ánimo. Creo que esta victoria es buena. Creo que los muchachos, o sea, hay muchos muchachos jóvenes ahora que, 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 que pueden coger la confianza, ¿no? Creo que ellos pueden tener la confianza. Y, y sí, eh, no ten, ahora mismo creo que, que, que es todo eh, cuestión de hacer ajuste ¿no? entre nosotros mismos ¿no? y, y, y si sí se, puede, se puede ganar el juego, se puede ganar el juego, ¿por qué no? El equipo está bueno. Eh, es todo confianza, tener confianza de cada, en cada cual de uno. You know, this, this victory is great for us. Uh, it, it, it felt like uh, the team was a little down with a couple of those tough losses. So seeing a victory and, and for us to pull out this win uh, gets the team excited. Uh, you know, it's a young club and, uh, you know, we just got to stay motivated and keep working. Uh, there's a lot of talent on this team, so we can definitely start winning some games. That's that's without a doubt. But, uh, you know, it, it adds to the confidence. We just got to be confident out there and do what we can do. And the talent's there. So with that said, I, it shouldn't, you know, we should be able to win a lot of games. Gracias, Yadiel. Gracias, Octavio. Thank you. This is a guy in Yadiel Hernandez who has been quietly a leader for this Nationals team, especially with the Latin guys on the team. Everyone really gravitates towards him. That was the case when he was down at the Nationals minor league affiliates last year at AAA Fresno, this year at AAA Rochester. But up here with the big league club as well, you sit near the dugout and you watch players come up to him during a game and pick his brain on things. He's played the game for a long time. He played in Cuba and had a lot of success there, put up big numbers in the minor leagues as well. And it has to be incredibly satisfying for him, Scott, to finally make it up to the major leagues as a 32-year-old. Now he's getting the playing time at 33 and contribute for a team, even though the Nationals aren't where they want to be in the standings. You know, a big win today for them to snap a seven-game skid and Yadiel Hernandez key in that. Are the stories that we love. Easy to root for Yadiel Hernandez. Dan, thank you so much. Awesome work tonight. Great chatting with you throughout the evening. And look at Yadiel Hernandez. I mean, he's a pro. And when the Nats have won ball games, that's when he's showing up big. 444, four homers, 12 RBIs in those 25 games that he's been a part of in victories when he's been up with the big league squad. He is up. He is appreciative.
and he is loving his time with the Washington Nationals right now, playing on an everyday basis down the stretch. We still have more to go on the postgame show presented by Spotify as the Nationals top the Blue Jays 12-6 at home. Just smokes it. Forget about it. Oh, my goodness. Great baseball right there. And that one's going to go. That ball was crushed. And this is going to do it. Oh, my. Strike three. That was a great play. I talked about his fielding skills. That was remarkable. I might talk today. So, oye, tengo un micrófono, ¿viste? Para que sepa. Te apuesto que hoy me habla mucho y... Hablador. Y tú estás un mosquito. Yo me bañé hoy. Dímelo, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás, mi hermano? Estamos bien, estamos bien. papá? Bien, bien. ¿Cuándo lo recuerdo? ¿Cómo estás, mi hermano? Inteligente. 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 Es un buen picheo. Un buen picheo en la zona. Un buen picheo. Un buen picheo. No. He's swinging, bro. Just no swing it to the right side. Yeah. Go the other way. How you like uh, Corey Dickinson? It's my, my guy, bro. You try your bat yet? No, yeah. Yeah? You tried everybody. Yeah. But he got a good bat, too. I feel it, I, I feel it. You like it? Yeah. Dímelo, papá. Bien, bien, la familia. Bien, bien, gracias a Dios, papá. Gracias, gracias, papá. Oye, mi hermano, me alegro, loco, que estuviera aquí de nuevo, papá. Me alegro. Y tu hijo, yo veo tu hijo, tu hijo es frustrado con esto, ¿eh? Así mismo yo a esa edad. Perfume, amor. Esta muchacha sí que buena, me vi mirándome. Eso es lo que se baila donde yo vivo. What is up, I cannot change. I got it, I got it, I got it. Ponte ready, tú tocas ahí bateando. Toque. Tú te envases, tienes que tocar. Ah. Vamos a ver. Manoa, ponte el casco y la vaina para que te ready. Yo le dije a él que si él daba un gi, que si él daba un gi, él le iba a usar la cadena mía, la grande, para pichar un día. Pero bueno, da un gi. But he said, he told me, he told me, first piece fastball. Right in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sending, sending, sending. Sending. Papa. Standing, Pajón. Mano. Hey, hey. There's so much gold there, and you can hear it each week on Play Loud on YouTube. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube is presented by Spotify, the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan Experience. All new episodes are here free only on Spotify. Scott Braun and the three-time All-Star Dan Plesac, my good friend, as we watched 
a 12-6 Nats W, but we listened to absolute gold from Vladdy Jr. just now. Let's get to some curious creators who are with us in the live game commentary section throughout the night. Austin Kleska said, Vlad Jr. mic'd up? Yes. There's so much there. First off, I'm thinking about the AB where he's telling himself to be smart. And he's just talking through the experience. How about his conversation with Alcides Escobar, how he said, hey, welcome back. Alcides had quite a journey to get himself back into the major leagues. And Alcides telling him, I never gave up. I mean, that is just genuine sound gold in the game that we love to hear. Sports Gaming Universe letting us know, man, I love the new cam for the depth of field, whatever they're called, LOL. Megalodon, I know that because it's one of my nephew's favorite prehistoric animals. And that's what the camera is named after. This is some of the great images. I mean, you think of some of the audio access that we get on YouTube and then some of the cinematic experiences that we have thanks to Mr. Megalodon. We are fortunate. It almost makes you feel like the players are coming right out of your screen at home. And I'll tell you what, this was a big win for the Nationals. We saw the bullpen, the Jays' bullpen struggle again. Uh, it was a real underbelly of this team, April, May to June. They've tried to address that. They made some changes. They've made a couple of trades to bring some guys in. A little bit disappointing for Manoa. His last start was so good against the Angels. I think on paper this looked like a, a game that was favoring the Blue Jays. Give Eric Fetty a lot of credit. He was able to contain this lineup for five innings and gave the Nationals a chance to blow this thing open, and they did. We saw some impressive bullpen experiences so far tonight, some appearances both on the Blue Jays and the National side. Ultimately, of course, Blue Jays had trouble in the late stages, and actually that really is at this point the weakness for Toronto, even though they've done some work to shore up the bullpen. Adam Simber has been nails for the most part except for this past weekend, but that's still a soft spot. It is, and I think, Scott, what makes it so difficult in the American League, if, if you have a weak bullpen, these lineups are so deep, particularly in the AL East, that it's very difficult for pitchers to get through five, six, seven innings. So you're going to go to that bullpen more than you're going to go to. And the lineups in the National League, they're just not as deep. The eight, the nine-hole hitter with that pitcher, this is a grown man's baseball when you're playing in the American League. And if you don't have a good bullpen, it eventually will show. The Blue Jays, their starting pitching is good. They're going to need to get some more length. They're going to score enough runs. They catch the ball. The big key for the Blue Jays, can their bullpen come through in the next seven weeks? The next seven weeks are going to be wild, by the way. I mean, we were having fun during one of the breaks looking through standings right now as the Yankees picked up two wins today at home against the Red Sox. And we're going, okay, look at the Yankees go. Okay, look at the Red Sox starting to crumble a little bit. And suddenly those two are in the same spot. And you throw the Oakland A's into the mix. The A's have like a half a game lead right now on the Red Sox in the Yankees in that American League wild card. The Blue Jays are four games back out of that wild card spot. They're going to have to make up some ground. It's not going to be easy because I don't think the Red Sox, the A's, and the Yankees are all going to go into a swoon. The Blue Jays are going to need to play well the next seven weeks. Yeah, and they have some opportunities. If you look at their schedule, I mean, Google it. There are seven games against the Twins still for Toronto. They have quite a few matchups with the Tigers and with the Orioles. Those are the wins you need to pick up. And just like this series, too, I mean, Tomorrow, I don't want to call it a must win, but you, you got to pick up a game if you've got two against the Nationals with the way that their roster is set up down the stretch here. So Toronto is four games out of a wild card spot. The Yankees and the Red Sox are now tied for the second seed. The A's have the first one. You see three teams highlighted on the right side of your screen, but only two teams make it as a wild card in each league. And then the Mariners still with somewhat of a fighting chance. In the West, it's still... A two-team race with the Astros and the A's. The White Sox are really sitting pretty. They're the one team that can really, I don't want to say, you know, loosen up a little bit, but they can load up and make sure that everyone's healthy and the rotation is set come playoff time. We were with that team last week, and Tony La Russa said, yes, but I want to make sure we're playing competitive baseball too. I think one of the keys that the White Sox have, they have the luxury of getting Eloy Jimenez and Luis Roberts, guys that have missed extended time. They don't have to rush to get them back and get them at bats. They're going to both be ready to go around mid-September into October. I don't think not missing a few months of season is going to hurt the White Sox. They might be the best position team going into the postseason. 
My question is right now, Carlos Rodon has had a terrific year. He's been skipped to start, has some inflammation in his shoulder. Dallas Keuchel's been one good, one bad. Lance Lynn, Dylan Cease have been very good for the White Sox. But this American League is going to be very interesting. And that National League West is going to be wild, too. Yeah, you're right. Let's flip it to the National League side because the Giants lead the charge still. And they're four games better than L.A. 11 up now on San Diego. Look at the lead there for the Giants over a Padres club that many expected to be better than San Francisco heading into the season. Milwaukee's sitting pretty in the central. And we'll have the Brewers on the schedule a couple times. Once against the Giants on our YouTube game of the week. And then once against the Cardinals. That'll be the last one on our schedule all the way in September. And then the Braves have taken command of the East. Two games up on Philly. The Mets just continue to slide in that really difficult stretch. My grandfather's a big Mets fan. He called me yesterday and he goes, how does it work out where they suddenly play 13 against the Giants and the Dodgers? Well, I said two things. One, the schedule's made a while back, and the Giants weren't supposed to be this good, so you didn't look at it at one point and go, oh, my gosh, this is going to be so difficult for the Mets. And number two, they had other chances to grab a big lead in the division, and it never happened for them, and now they're looking up. I think the major danger in the wild card, look out for the Cincinnati Reds. Joey Votto is playing with his hair on fire right now. Their bullpen has been much better. On a negative, Jesse Winker went on the IL with an intercostal strain. They think he'll be back in 10 days. Right now, the Padres are only two games up in that wild card with the Cincinnati Reds, and the Reds have a very favorable schedule going down the stretch. The Padres have a really difficult schedule. Yeah, they had kind of their easier part of the schedule. They're in the midst of it right now, the Padres, and they haven't taken advantage. I mean, they had a bad series against the Diamondbacks. Walk-off loss yesterday to Colorado. It's been a problem for them. Actually, their starting pitching hasn't been good enough. Blake Snell has had a couple of good starts. Hugh Darvish on the IL. They take a flyer on Jake Arrieta, who was designated for assignment by the Cubs last week. So that's how desperate right now the, the Padres are for starting pitching. Is Jake Arrieta the answer? I don't know, but he's better than anything else they've been running out there. It's been a disappointing season up to this point, even though Tatis has been one shining bright star. It's been a disappointment. I think the Padres thought they would be where the Giants are at, and they're on the outside looking in. That's right, and luckily they have Fernando Tatis Jr. back, but as you can see, there's still a lot of work for us to do here on YouTube. I know you enjoy doing this, Stan. It was great to have you at the ballpark, too. It's Isn't it nice to be at the ballpark? Oh, a beautiful it. ballpark here in Nationals Ballpark. If you've never been, get here to see it. We'll be in Houston next week for the Royals and an Astros team that can really swing the bat. The Brewers and Giants, I mean, that's a marquee matchup that we have on our schedule on September 2nd. Mariners and Astros both in playoff contention on the 8th of September. Then we have the A's and Angels, and Oakland's just two games back of first place Houston. We'll finish up with the Cardinals and the Brewers. Now, the Brewers are in control of the division in the Central, but the Cardinals are not out of it. They have a shot. Jack Flaherty's back. It's not going to be easy, but it's doable. Jack is back in the offense, and Nolan Arenado is starting to hit home runs, along with Paul Goldschmidt. Might be a little bit too little, too late for the Redbirds. This was a blast. The Nationals take it 12-6 over the Toronto Blue Jays, and the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube will swing back on Wednesday. We'll see you on the 25th of August for a matchup in Houston, Texas. Coverage begins with our pregame show, 1.30 Eastern. That's a day game. We'll see you then. For Mr. Durable, DJ Dan Plesak, the great Dan Kolko, and our entire superstar crew, I'm Scott Braun logging out for now. We'll see you next time on YouTube.